What up, everyone? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. This episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. Look, going to the grocery store right now in California is a little bit sketchy. HelloFresh is here to help you. You get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Skip those trips to the grocery store, make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. You see, HelloFresh cuts stressful meal planning and grocery store trips so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in 30 minutes or less. They offer over 20 recipes each week with a range of flavors, cuisines, and ingredients so you'll never get bored. And you cut down on grocery bills and food waste. They deliver pre-portioned ingredients so you're not overbuying, which is a burden on your wallet and the planet. I just started with HelloFresh, and so I haven't actually tasted the food yet, but I ordered, and I'm kind of excited actually, because this week they're going to send me bulgogi lime pork tenderloin, chicken sausage rigatoni, and firecracker meatballs. I'm not sure what makes them firecracker, but I am excited. Now, because my problem is this, I like going to the grocery store and buying food every day. I like, I like fresh, right? I don't like doing the once a week thing. But now during these unprecedented times, <clears throat> that's what you're supposed to be doing, going once a week, buying for the whole week. Whenever I do that, I end up with a bunch of wasted food because I change my mind or something goes bad or, you know, any number of reasons. But with HelloFresh, they pre-portion it so I use what is sent and I don't have any waste. It is going to be excellent, and next week I hope to tell you how it all tastes. For now, go to HelloFresh.com slash SmokingTire10 and use code SmokingTire10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. That's right. 10 free meals with free shipping if you go to HelloFresh.com slash SmokingTire10 and use code SmokingTire10. All right? All right. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. We are also brought to you by Policy Genius. It's a new year. Let's start it off right. Start it off right by saving some cash. Right? Maybe reshop your home and auto insurance rates with Policy Genius. You could save up to $1,055 per year with help from their licensed experts. Look. Wife and I just bought a new house. I have been paying a certain amount of, of uh, home insurance at my old place for a while now. I'm trying to reshop with Policy Genius right now. Save me some money. Maybe put it into landscaping. Maybe get myself a new big green egg. Maybe just save it. I don't know. But here's what you do to do the same. You go over to policygenius.com. You answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property. Policy Genius then just does the rest. They compare rates from 30 top insurers to find you the lowest quotes. Then their experts look into all the ways they can maximize your saving, including bundling home and auto, et cetera, et cetera. If Policy Genius finds a better rate than what you're currently paying, they get you switched for free, handle the headaches and the costs. That's why they've got a five-star rating across over 1,600 reviews on Trustpilot and Google. If you own a home, make 2021 the year you save a thousand bucks simply by reshopping your home and auto insurance on one website, policygenius.com. Get started right now because when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. We're also brought to you by Lemonade Health, and not lemonade like the beverage, lemonade like AID, brought to you by Lemonade Health, right? You want to keep your health checked up and good, but in these unprecedented times, uh, especially in these unprecedented times, you definitely want to stay as healthy as possible. I work out, I take my vitamins, I try to eat right, but it's important to keep up with your doctor. Maybe you don't have a doctor, though. Maybe you don't want to go into a medical clinic right now. That's totally understandable. Lemonade Health is a virtual medical office. They provide you affordable health care without the need for insurance. And over the internet, they can treat anything from ED to anxiety, depression, insomnia, hair loss, high blood pressure, and more. For instance, 
I have high blood pressure, right? And I, my, believe it or not, my physician retired. He retired. I don't have a physician anymore in the middle of a pandemic. What am I going to do? Just randomly start shopping physicians right now? No, I'm not. But I need a refill on my high blood pressure medication, which I've been taking for many, many years. If I go to Lemonade Health, I can handle that without having to visit an office. It's a routine task, pretty easy, doesn't need any advanced level in-person care, and Lemonade Health can handle that. And they can handle it for you, too. They are providing Smoking Tire listeners with 50% off your first order of any ED medication. Getting started is easy. Visit LemonadeHealth.com. That's spelled Lemon A-I-D. LemonAidHealth.com slash tire. Fill out the online questionnaire and their medical team will review and get you that medication fast. Delivery is fast free and comes in discreet packaging. LemonAidHealth.com slash tire for 50% off your first order of ED medicine. And while you're over there, Get yourself checked out for everything else, too, because it's a pandemic and we're in unprecedented times. And if you can't handle the unprecedented times, you know who's there for you? Tradecraft Farms, folks, the official ganja provider of the Smoking Tire podcast. I smoke weed. I smoke really, really good weed. And that helps keep me stay sane and not hating the entire world. Tradecraft Farms grows the finest ganja in Southern California. It is legal if you're in California. They sell it in other dispensaries. They sell it in retail locations. But what I'd really like you to do is follow their pretty little Instagram, Tradecraft Farms on Instagram, because basically that's the metric how they know that supporting the smoking tire is good. So if you guys want to see pretty pictures of the best ganja in Southern California, the kind of stuff that we are blazing on the daily, Tradecraft Farms on Instagram, go check them out. All right, on this episode of the Smoking Tire Podcast, it's the crew show. Me and Zach are chilling, and our old pal, one of our best people, one of our closest friends, Thaddeus Brown, is in from Dubai. 16-hour flight and many COVID tests later. He has been chilling with us for two weeks, helping us film cars, driving some interesting stuff, and we are going to report on all the shit we've been driving. Thaddeus Brown joining the crew show on the Smoking Tire Podcast. Like Thaddeus Kanye Brown right there. is in the house. Are we, we oh, there's the shot. Zachary is in the house. Cheers. And uh, Thad's visiting us from Dubizzle. Bye. This is the, this is the last day, day day nine of a ten of a ten day trip. <laughs> we've done. We've had adventures. It's been yeah. fun. We rented a Ferrari. Correct. We uh, went. We drove the Alpina XB7 in the canyons. Correct. Through some snow alongside the Ferrari. We went nice. off roading in the Fender. We drove the Mach E Briefly. to uh, be issued our first official shipment of Tradecraft Farms today, and boy, was that an enjoyable experience, guys! Very Tradecraft cool Farms are good, good, good people. And when you talk about being able to go to a place like that and leave with what we left with, and just just for saying it, follow them on Instagram, guys. Please make us look good. Keep this train rolling. I think it's cool that it's an actual business now. Like, yeah, that's just legitimate. Like, it's awesome. And uh, what else did we do? I wrote down the things. Oh, and we also drove briefly that twi the Twisted Defender, which uh, we uh, will have to have another go in because it was a little short, uh, short lived. Plus, Zach has gotten a new free lithium ion battery. Half, free, free half, not so free. free -ish, half not free. -ish, free -ish, but me. holy shit, did my car crank up? Did it start. really? Yeah. Like, I thought my starter was going out before or something. It was like, it, no it has a lot more cranking power. That's why, you know, lithium ions are used for uh, for electric cars because it's yeah. like instant power. So, yeah, legitimately cranked up faster. What's the name of that company? Anti Gravity is the battery. Go. The battery weighs 16 pounds. It's nice. 40 pounds lighter than my other one. Two gallons of milk. And when you've got a. Uh, Two gallons of milk. <laughs> that's a mine. It's. That's the. That's what six, 14 pounds is, right? 16, 16 pounds. pounds. About, yeah, Gallon milk's like eight pounds. Okay. Yeah. Or water. One of the two. And I guess your battery before would have been. 10 gallons of milk? Yeah, 56 pounds. What oh, uh, seven gallons of yeah. milk. Yeah. No, eight. Eight. <laughs> seven gallons would be 49 pounds. Which, Sorry. Which is a lot. This is another endorsement for Tradecraft Farms. <laughs> <laughs> Your, math. Your math will no longer work, people. Um, awesome. But it's nice to have Thad back. Uh, get in the super chat if you're with us live. We're going to do 
some of that in the second half of the show. Um, but, uh, man, we did a bunch of driving of things this week. Yeah. Where should we start? Roland's rental Ferrari on Turo? I would say we could start with the M2 and the mismatch. Holy fuck, the M2 was the in there as well. The carbon fiber. The what? The roof was a different pattern oh, than the yeah. other parts. Oh, that really bothered you, didn't it? I didn't like it. That did. <laughs> the for, M2 was for so 95, good, though. How, how much? 90000 92. Come on. I mistakenly said in the video <laughs> that it was 83, which was the base price. Uh, and I knew that that ceramics and the DCT were optional, but I didn't realize how much they were. <laughs> it was ninety two thousand dollars. Conversely, and Zach, we're going to need to note this for the video. <laughs> Conversely, on the Defender, I went the other way. Unfortunately, th you know they <laughs> normally <craft> farms. <laughs> they norm no no they normally give me the window sticker with the agreement I signed to get yeah, the, the car, Monroney. the Monroney, or it's left in the vehicle. In this case, I, I don't know, it got, it got emailed to me the next day, except I'd already made the video. And so, not the M2, the no, Defender. Okay, yeah. watch our M2 video, by the way. But the Defender, I, I tried to build one on uh, the configurator. Yeah. Now, it's actually kind of confusing, their configurator, and there's a few different ways you can end up in almost the same car. Almost, but not exactly. And so I thought we had the X model, which is the top of the line, all the off-roady shit plus all the luxury shit. It turns out it was dialed back. It was actually the SE model, but then optioned up with the extra off-roady shit. Hmm. And so I thought we were driving an $86,000 Defender, when in fact we were driving a $72,000 Defender. Whoa. Which really uh, increases the value proposition fucking enormously. Yeah, it does. Of, uh, I mean, I was, not, I, I, like, the car I built on the, on the website, it looked just like the one we fucking have outside. It looked yeah. the same, wow. but it but there was just some different, like I guess it has like rear seat entertainment and maybe another level up in the stereo and the the leather's a little nicer and I don't know I I was off and it turns out the car's cheaper so Zach we're gonna have to shoot a sidebar <laughs> that's like hey uh, I fucked up mm -hmm. and uh, here's scratch. the here's the actual it's actual actually price way cheaper it's wow. actually a lot cheaper seventy two G's for that thing. Which, is a value. Which I think is probably good for them that we value. It feels like it's an $86,000 thing yeah. rather than a yeah. seventy two. We're like, okay, yeah. Yeah. No, the PR guy was like, well, you know, yeah. I'm glad it's not the other way. <laughs> glad you didn't think it was 85 and it's really 100 but, you know. Um, 72, so the Defender is, rocks. <laughs> is real cool. Yeah. Wow. What? It's very And good. it comes with, when I was in there, it had like all the off-road settings, right? It yeah. Has, does it not have airlift and adjustable suspension? It does. No, it has. It has that too? Yeah. Wow, dude! So we hit it's and it's the four hundred, so it's the the bigger engine, the six cylinder with all the the gizmos, turbocharger, supercharger, and I, you know, iPhone charger, everything. iPhone. Well, actually, Not for a couple of things, a couple of things, I had a little were a little glitchy. So to be per, you know, I don't want to be all fucking roses about this thing. The uh, advanced track controls would not respond. Once. And I had we had to restart the car to and they fi and it fixed itself. The uh, um, what the fuck do you call it? The the the, the charging pad, oh, the wireless the induction, wireless charging, induction thing. Charging, induction charging. It would charge Thaddeus's phone, but not mine. It would do it more like a flip flop thing on my huh. phone. And then also the um, the the comfort access like when you when you park the car, the wheel goes up and away. You know what I mean? Sometimes if you'd start the car. But if the door wasn't, if you didn't get in the car and close the door and then start it, if you started it with the door open, the steering wheel would stay up. And then when you close the door, it wouldn't go down. You'd have to manually do it. Oh, weird. So the comfort yeah. access would only work in the second half of it when you close the door. Now, this Defender had 7,400 miles on it, 7,300 miles on it. So, okay. like, that's a ton for a press car. And, and so I don't know. You know, it might be a very early build that's just kind of still kicking around. I think the the steering wheel thing seems like something they could just program and fix. I, I could see at the factory someone just goes, okay, you get in, you close the door, mm -hmm. you put your seatbelt on, then you start the car. And they just didn't think about that. Yeah. But they could probably change that with like Maybe. Know, yeah. Wi-Fi. So those are the bad things. And then also there's no scrolling knob for stereo, for stations. So oh. if you don't, if you program your favorites, 
then you can quick click through using the steering wheel guy. Yeah. But if you're not a program your favorites person, there's literally no way to just scroll through stations. You have to do this insane menu jump. Like if you you click the next station touch button yeah. on the screen. A menu comes up where you can then swipe left or right to go through a toggle of stations. If you click one, that menu's gone now. That's You're now weird. in that station. So if that one you didn't like and you can't it doesn't show you what's playing on there. So you have to click it to see what's playing. Now to go back to the selector, it's another menu jump back to it. It's fucked. That's not good. That, no, that's it's why very all these tests bad. say that touchscreens are more dangerous yeah. than yeah. you know other way, other it, things. No, but we're really journalists. We don't program our favorites into every car. If you bought the car and you programmed your favorites, this might not be this might be a non-issue. It'd be less of an issue. Less of an issue, true. certainly. People I mean, are creatures of habit, but yeah. still that's that's pretty bad. There's probably like four like forty rounds of different presets you can put in. As well, like you have yeah, the preset like, one to whatever. So you're going to, you'll, you'll do that probably eventually. be fine, but yeah. that bothered me. Does that impact your ability to, to look at other menus, though? Like, you know, because some cars, the same thing you use to scroll. Yeah, yeah. One screen. Through thi- okay. yeah, it's yeah. one screen. You can't do two things at once. Like, you need some knobs. Like, it just I need needs a scrolling buttons. knob for stations. Everything That's needs it. a scrolling knob. A scrolling knob for stations, or maybe, I don't know, if there's a or way to a... move the clicky touch button on the steering wheel to individual stations... That would also be cool, but I couldn't find it. I dug. Okay, those are bad. Flappy paddles and clicky touch buttons. Other than that, <laughs> so, dude, this thing is so G off-road. Uh, it was off. Aw- it went up the Rower Flats Trail. I don't 20. know exactly how much faster, but absolutely faster than the G-Wagon did it. I think we did in 24, 26 minutes. It was like 26 minutes. It was really fucking fast. I was shocked at how fast we went up this trail. Dude. And we went... We... Like, in, when, when Zach and I took the G-Wagon up, we did not make choices that were as difficult as you and I made. By the top third of the trail, Thad and I were taking the hard fork on yeah. all of them. Uh, we didn't quite do that in the G-Wagon. This had off-road tires on it. It didn't, you know, it had, uh, but, bro, the way that it maintains traction and motion, um... I'm not sure I've ever driven a vehicle that's as easy to go up that hill. I mean, wow. it was easy, 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 easy. The like, super steep stuff, it's just like, boom, just get in it, boot it, and just up, <clears throat> up it goes. It's we got it on impressive. two wheels a couple times. We got it yeah. fucking <laughs> leaned over. <laughs> like, enough yeah. for me to go, oh, fuck. <laughs> I, we got like, it in oh some sand where I fucking just stood on the throttle for three or four seconds and it crawled itself yeah. out of whatever it was in. Right. Locking whatever things it has um, to lock. A lot faster. of clever diffs and things. And then you go on the road and it's got independent front and rear suspension. It's got the air suspension with, it doesn't have like a full dynamic mode, but it's got a tarmac mode. The It doesn't have paddle shifters, but the gear selector lever, lever is the correct direction. You know, forward is down and back is up. And it makes good good linear power. It's got nice brakes. And, and you find yourself on a canyon road, it's not Whip terrible. Him. Whip him. It's not terrible. And compared to that Gladiator thing, the, the Jeep Gladiator I had, which was in the high 60s, 66, dollars $67,000. And this thing is, oh, my God, you can, you're telling me you can get this for $5,000 more than that? <gasps> it's like the value of the fucking century. I mean, if I don't know what else you can get that's in that price point that has that level of capability, which is fucking extraordinary. Dude, serious. And then when you get on the road, pretty much drives 90% of the way to Range Rover. I mean, it's like... It rode nice. I rode in it with you, and it was was quiet. Gets a lot of the way to, if not full-size Range Rover, a lot of the way to Range Rover Sport. Well, here's the question, though. The Bronco problem. Not out yet. We don't know. Yeah, we don't. That's know. the thing. We don't know. I booked. I booked the first available Bronco Sport for a week. That's March third. That's confirmed. I asked about full size Bronco, and he said, no, "I don't even have an ETA." Yeah. So, well, um, I guess, and that's not a smoking tire thing. That's a like we don't yeah. have fucking. Apparently, there was some kind of delay in Bronco production. I, I, COVID, everything. Yeah, I mean, know. shocker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would, would a topless experience off roading? Make it better for you? I need you to be way more specific about that term. <laughs> Immediately. The um, vehicle being topless. I, so. I don't know. I've never 
my only experience off-roading vehicles without a roof was like an aerial nomad. I've, like I've never done the Jeep Slow. with with roof on and yeah. Jeep with roof off. I think it does help visibility and everything, but enjoyment. It's never like pulled me in as much. I'd rather if I'm out in the elements, I'd really rather have a roof I can depend yeah, on. Yeah, I agree. I think I'd rather have a f- like a fixed route, you know. But I don't think I but think the, the markets are too the... different. I think there's a Venn diagram with uh, with Bronco Land Rover, but it's mostly like Wrangler people and Bronco people. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, Land, and Land Rover is like you want to be off roady, but you want to be way more comfortable around town. We t- Thad and I talked about this in the video. Like there are people who, and I suppose we're kind of like this with sports cars. You know, with sports cars, I don't want to put it in auto and. You know, and have the all-wheel drive, turbocharged, Electric you know, isolated propulsion. hybrid assist. I don't want that experience in a sports car. I want to be rowing gears, you know, in a gated yeah. shifter. But to me, like off-roading, and maybe you feel this way or not, like to me, off-roading is more about where I can go and what I can see and what I can do when I'm there and how far from civilization I can be and how I can experience a landscape in a way that you can't do from the tarmac. Like, I enjoy that more so than I enjoy the manual locking diff and a four-speed manual fucking Wrangler or Samurai or something like that, bouldering, you know, being like, look at this hill I drove up where, you know, you couldn't even climb versus I went out in the middle of nowhere and, you know, camped or whatever. I agree. Yeah, I agree. That's... And that's, that's why Land Rovers too. are not excluding the old Defenders, like new Range Rovers and shit and the new Defenders. Like, that's why they're great, because they allow more people to access those types of places. I mean, I think Wranglers do that, too. Uh, they're just not as good on the highway True. to get there. Well, yeah. And they're a little bit cheaper. But the difference is, like, the thing we associate with Wrangler is the lifted, hardcore ones you see around. Yeah, the rock crawly guys. Right. Yeah. Just Everyone kind of... I've driven that's stock is terrible. It's just miserable. It's I just uh, the last so bad one I on drove, I didn't mind that much. It was way better than we've talked about this. Like yeah. it was better than the one before it by a huge margin. But that's like such a low bar. That's, <laughs> that's such I a think, low uh, bar. I didn't think it was that bad. It's a four door. The Defender is the, infinitely is nicer. Be, yeah, it is nicer. Oh, it's yeah, quieter. That's a really nice. Yeah. Fucking Demuro just drove his shit. His Defender one ten that he bought himself. Uh, and he, by all accounts, he seems to like. He just drove that shit from San Diego to Nantucket in like three days. Yeah, but he's yeah, like, you're not narrow. Doing, you're not doing that in a Wrangler. No, no, no. no one's I, doing I would that not. Anymore. I would not try to argue that the Wrangler is a better on-road vehicle or a better. No, it's not. Town it's vehicle. not even better. But for the yeah. price difference, it's not even close. If you can afford the Defender. If the you're Wrangler someone like who non-starter. buys a Wrangler to just drive around town because you feel like one Lots day, you, wh- right, a long time ago you went fly fishing once, like you should get the Land Rover. That's what so many people do, and they, they purchase the wrong vehicle because it taps into a part of them they wish they, they used more. Yeah, the Might marketing be thing. We're not even be making this comparison. Like, why, why do I default to comparing it against a Wrangler instead of comparing it against the G-Wagon and going... Went everywhere the G wagon went, and for all intents and purposes, it was just as comfortable too. They're the price. They're both and it was price. half the price. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That yeah. is the better. They're just squares. It is the better. Comparison. It kind of exists in its own market, really. What is the in between? I mean, I guess it. I mean, the the LR three would have been it, or LR four. Uh, sorry, would have been it. And what else? No, uh, they're kind of different. High end Grand Cherokees. But the LR four is a yeah. seven seater. High end Grand, Grand Cherokees Cherokee. would would cross over, and uh, I'm definitely missing something. What else is it? What's another high-end off-roader? Is there anything? Not specific or specifically. I mean, well, Cayennes would have been there back in the day, but certainly not anymore. I think it's really about LR4. It's really replacing LR4 more than anything else. Oh, I was walking back from getting breakfast burrito. The, uh, on the way to your house, there's a guy with a Cayenne with all the mm-hmm. all the things on it. Yeah, he's got I'm like, like a, That looks awesome. Yeah, he's got like a, a Trans-Siberia Cayenne with like big big tires and a roof rack and like the shovel and shit. Yeah, and Joey Seeley's doing shit with that. Yeah. Is that going to be a thing? Is that the new yeah. like lug X previous luxury off-road vehicles? I think- Or just the, the Cayennes because they have locking diffs. Well, in Porsche that people- want to drive other Porsches, yeah, right? So lo- there's lots of people in LA who, they don't just have a 911, they've also got a Panamera and a, and a Macan or a, and a Cayenne or whatever. This building. Yeah, and so I think um, the idea of taking a Cayenne and doing some very 
mild and subtle mods to make it extremely capable without ruining it on the street or making it non-luxurious, I think is very appealing to a small but very wealthy section of the population. It seems like a fun way to off road, though. You get like all that oh, fun, super fun. Yeah, you get all that Baja. You look in. I mean, it basically it basically shit. turns a Cayenne into this. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not. It, it would be no different driving that Cayenne versus driving the Defender on that trail. Oh, I think the oh, one that Joey builds, it, it's like an earlier Cayenne, so it has different locking diffs. It has certain hardware that he really likes that works really well. He's like the diesel only. I he likes the diesel he ones, He likes yeah. the diesel ones, but I don't think he will only... Didn't we drive I don't think one of the diesel only, ones? We drove it somewhere. I mean, yeah, when it was new, I we had one as a as a press car. We, we had did, it, for, it was a Q7. No, we, we did used it, it for the car show. We it went was really the car show. We took it to Chuck Walla, and Nino drove it. And I remember that it went to Chuck Walla and back on one tank of diesel. That was like a thing. Yeah, that was good. That's the that's probably the most boring part of that entire story. <laughs> <laughs> entire <June. laughs> well, we've driven um, a lot of a lot of things over the years. Yeah, yeah. Well, wait. I guess now since I'm one but, million fucking people go. Yeah, where's our fucking gold play button, Zach? Have you seen the email come through to no, claim but that? It, allegedly, Yuri uh, from um, Straight Pipes told me that it can take a couple months. Oh, really? Yeah. You can see their building from your building. Let's just yeah. Go over. I don't think we pick it up Yo, there. What's up? Give me some. I don't think they're open. I think they closed. Is the YouTube studio open right now? I haven't been there in f- since it opened and they years. gave us free drinks. The last time I went there was for the Gymkhana 2 premiere. Mm. Remember? Was that was that you two? Yep. I remember that. Yeah, it's like a mile from uh, here. Yeah. And we were there uh, like Is that where was that? Gymkhana 2. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, when uh, they, uh, Scott ordered those 60 inch pizzas, that Big Mama's pizza, mm. the 60 inch pizzas. Do you remember the are the neighbors pizza incident? <laughs> yeah, Lawrence. <laughs> Don't use his name. <laughs> it could be anybody. It could be, it could anybody. be anybody. And uh, could yeah, be anybody. You just quoted the guy from Office Space, the neighbor named Lawrence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, hey uh, man, <laughs> there was a pizza incident. Uh, <laughs> hey man, you ever uh, you ever have a chick who wants to roll around on a pizza and then fuck you after she's covered in pizza? Because uh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do? That million, million dollars. By the way. Could you help me lift this 60-inch pizza over the gate? Because yeah. I don't want to put it on an angle. I had to lift it over the gate. The, that's like I was home with Nino, and like mm-hmm. the guy <laughs> next door rings the doorbell. And is like, hey, can you help me with something? I got to get this pizza over the thing because he has a high gate because it's you know where he lives. So we had to boost. I'm I'm tall. Like we had to boost this thing over a very tall gate to yeah. get the pizza in because it doesn't fit. The alternative the door. would have been a very steep angle, then, which for a pizza, right, turns into not a calzone. Work. Yeah, and the yeah. pizza calzones. Yeah, wrinkle in space and time. Yeah, and, and you don't want to wrinkle the pizza before the, no. the young woman rolls around on no, it. No, not at all. Right, exactly. It's exactly. very very strange, man. Very over strange. There. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he is not a Defender buyer. He is a Tesla buyer. No, he's a Tesla. Owner. Yeah, but th- that thing fucking rocks. Anyway, Super we liked surprised. it very much, despite its its uh, frustrating flaws. Yeah. The- and, but, like, and I also kind of wish it didn't have the hybrid assist thing. Like, I know why it's there, but, you know, complexity in Worries off-roaders me. concerns me. Right. That's one reason I would go Wrangler. If I if I was cross shopping them, which I'm not, but yeah. Pentastar V6, well, the, I beat the fuck out of enough of those in town and country uh, minivans like that are rented that I trust it. Yeah, well, the the British contingent back in Dubai will be happy to know that the Defender gets a. I really liked review. the Defender very much. I mean, I I, I went I went so far as to uh, spec out a little three door uh, for Hannah maybe because you know she likes boxy cars. And there's very few boxy cars available, but both Bronco and and Defender are. Did it's, Hannah say anything about the Defender? I didn't, I didn't even ask no. her if she liked it when it was in the garage. I think, I think she, she said may have liked the color. Yeah, the color is it's like pistachio gold. It's nice. It's cool. It's I think fine. it's cool. Like it's they're great. not. It, they're, it's have, not available in great colors. It's available in like three grays, a, a white, a black. Yeah. Two silvers and like a pea green, and then this gold. I would, I think I've seen one in black that's super cool, all black, and as well as I think, remember like the the satin paint jobs they put on the M cars. 
Yeah. Like a, a matte satiny. What are, they, what are the fuck do they call it? It was super expensive. It was uh, frozen. Frozen. Yeah, it was matte, frozen. That, that would look finish. so cool yeah. in like a frozen. I don't want to drive a matte finished off-roader. Oh, look, I mean, oh. I would wrap it, I guess, but like, I don't. you don't want to fucking I'm, scrape I'm that. very over matte. Yeah, and you can't wash those. You have to wash those a special way, right? Yeah, that, that's yeah. not entirely true. You just have to use clean I just think um, mitts and stuff. Oh. Actually, it's been... One thing that has surprised me, and in a good way, I'm, I'm I'm so rarely surprised in a good way by the car industry, not car, not individual cars. Individual cars surprise me all the time, but in the in the industry, one thing that has really impressed me is that factory matte paint jobs, ten years on now, or eight, nine, ten years on, for the most part. Have actually held up kind of okay. They're um, resale or in no, general? no, no. Just the look of the. You know, I thought I was like these things are gonna be fucked in ten thousand miles. My homie yeah. Nick, though, um, uh, Nick from Connecticut, who also has a place out here, has a frozen white M3. It's like a 2012 or 13. It's got a lot of miles on it, eighty thousand, ninety thousand miles. He drives a lot, and actually, it has held up like shockingly fucking well. He didn't have film put on it or anything like that. Like, good, it really has held up <laughs> nicely. You just have to. You, I wouldn't take it to like a car wash. You you know you got to wash it, have it have it hand washed. But besides that, it's a cool cool paint on that kind of car. It looks great, but I was just certain. I was certain that there, these right, cars would be not rock last because Matt apart. wraps don't hold up for more than a few years. They, they no. get smooth spots and shiny spots and dull spots, and they get great. If out. you fuck up a you could you could fuck up a matte paint job too, but if you take the right care of it, which is not that hard. Um, and typically it's on a kind of, you know, it's not it's not a Camry with a right. matte paint no, job. Right. You're talking about an enthusiast car typically, so it'll be, and it'll have care. Basically to protect the paint in a cool way, other than clear. Yeah. 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 It's like, oh, I kind of want my Riviera blue Porsche to be Miami blue for the summer. Oh, if you if, yeah, you, if you mean, wrap if you, it, if you wrap it in wrap it in whatever, yeah, yeah. Well, you can you can do that, but yeah. or gold um, or whatever the fuck. Some of the new things. films are real cool. Like I've talked to some, I've seen some some guys that are, have some of the newest technology films, and they really have um, figured out how to make them shine mm. like a like a pretty decent quality paint job. Yeah. I saw this dude. Uh, this homie Wes, elite finish detailing. He had the Shelby and sorted, and he had his stripe package okay. on his uh, on his Shelby. Like it really looked like paint. It was very good. It That's looked cool, cool as hell. It, was, it had the right shine. Um, the, so there's some uh, paint protection guys in Dubai that have like computer CAD cut pieces. It's insanely expensive, and they have a massive vinyl. Mm -hmm. It's like that's so detailed for everything. A lot of the people are using these the pre cut, yeah. and and for almost any normal car, you're going to get a pre cut kit. Yeah. But like the crazy shit, like the Habibi, homie Chris. Bro, uh, Bugatti. No, dude, this guy Chris West, the guy from Expel who did my Safari. Yeah, he hand cut every bit of that. And it took him forever. Yeah. Like that detailed. <laughs> like six months after he did my car, that dude won installer of the year at like the paint protection film awards Jeez. in Vegas. That th he comes, he lives in Alaska. This dude lives in Alaska and like, a, like every two weeks on, two weeks off, he like goes somewhere, works at some local shop, does two or three gnarly ass installs for like all the money in the world, and then fucks off back to Alaska for two weeks. Good for and him. And then flies somewhere else and does it. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's a way to live. It was pretty intense. Slang that film, son. And he got, I didn't pay him for that expel thing. They paid him for that for the promotion, but like, I've never seen a rap as good as the one on my car, awesome. ever. I didn't it's even insane. notice there was one on it. That's exactly why. <laughs> yeah. You literally can't see it. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. Every seam is hidden. Yeah, it's unbelievable. That's it should be. Yeah, it, looks, it, it well, looks awesome. It's like the thing to do automatically where I'm at, just due to harsh environment. Does it's it like, protect from sun, too? I think they have like some kind of UV thing in it. At least all the newer cars. Like anything older, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. those get fucked. Right. But do you drive through fucking sandstorms and shit? That's what it's yeah. about. So what, are the ele what elements are we talking about? Like heat, yeah. uh, UV, yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Occasionally the rain and whatnot, mm -hmm. but like rock chips and sand, like you get fucking sandblasted on the highway. I remember driving through a sandstorm the one time I was in Dubai. Yeah, yeah. would it have been normal. handy to have when you had your mini out here. 
when, when we turned uh, your oh, rent. Oh, yeah. No, that was actually the best thing ever because insurance paid for all yeah, that. Yeah, free yeah, paint yeah, job. It was, it was yeah, amazing. that it was, was nice. an act of God. I swear I saw that many marked to the side God. of the road. That many is dead. I don't know. No, I it died you, when we went to trade it in. It just just didn't start. It's not fully <laughs> dead. That thing that thing bounced around. I guarantee you that thing bounced around the wholesale auctions for like six months. Got dumped in a buy here, pay here, and is now fucking parked on the side of the road in Culver City. It's at a but, nice British farm. Uh, yeah. what, stop it's banging north. on the table. Oh, sorry, uh, it's like, a thick table. But Jesus, you got fucking Viking hands. <laughs> I love the uh, <laughs> that, the R fifty three mini was fucking great. First gen minis. I'll oh, tell you what. Awesome. You find me. When can you pull up Bring a Trailer Zach previous auction results for the mini for Mini Coopers uh, R fifty three generation if they sort? I the bet JCW. Oh, I yeah. bet you a you low mileage back. clean. Or make sure your shot's not fucked. I'm just a low not mileage to bang on the table. <laughs> J, JCW first gen mini is going to be worth a lot of money because there are going to be none left. Twelve fifteen. I mean, eventually, not yeah. now. What maybe? I sold mine for sixteen five in oh. two thousand ten, but and it, I don't think it'd be worth more. But I God, the R fifty three was good with the supercharger. It's great. The thing was awesome. Your car was really yeah. fun. It was like the I Santa Barbara whip mobile, it. but it kept it. I think it probably kept us going for about eight months. Oh, that car. on the way in in the on the way here, I saw one of those GP the new. Mini Cooper with the Oh, the, the one the with thing, the box flares? With the things? <laughs> like, what is this shit? This is terrible. You think terrible. you hate it now. Where do you drive it? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. We, we drove that one um, JCW on, on the The cup. one from Silver State. No, the, with the Cup 2 tires that we finished in like three days. No, yeah, no, the one that had the bars we burned to the tires. The Pirellis, yeah. Those were, yeah, those that were thing those Oh, the one that had like courses. <laughs> yeah. No, it's the, the Countryman. That was oh, like, that was good. What? In South Carolina? No, what no, no. What are you it, fucking talking about? It was a a Mini Cooper, a yeah. hot Mini Cooper. Yeah. Was it great? With the roll cage. Yeah, the GP. Zach and yeah, I yeah. did Silver State Classic in it, and we got ejected for fucking breaking all fast. the speed rules. Right, okay. I made a sandwich it was while so we drove. Boring. So you did that, and then we and when it came back, the tires yeah, we, were I, done. Yeah, yeah, I mean, okay, that's so. highly likely. We, put, we, had we twice, must have though. put 2,500 miles on that car. Yeah. I mean, we drove to Erie, Nevada, then we did a race that was 100 miles. Ely. Drove back Ely. Ely. Oh, right. Yeah. Anyway, results. Oh, here we go. For uh, here we go. Four thousand mile. Two thousand six. Forty five thousand. Forty five k. You're kidding. Yeah, Jason. Oh, that's a GP. That's a GP. Yeah. Hang on. How about that's... uh two here twelve thousand mile two thousand six JCW six speed nineteen five. No way. That's what we're talking about. That's the sweet spot right there. There's gotta be that is easily. Twenty. That's easily twenty thousand dollars worth of car. Yeah. A oh, fucking that's twenty thousand worth of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. These cars, not the GP. Forget the fucking yeah, GP. GP. But a John Cooper Works R fifty three. And here's why it's good. I'm a nerd about this. Here's why this is a good spec. This particular one because it has the John Cooper Works grill and body kit. Mm. It has the two piece wheels, but they're seventeens, not eighteens. Nice. In a R fifty three. You want 17s or even 16s if you can get them. Yeah, not 18s. That's a fabulous spec for that car. Yeah. Oh, it's got the real leather. So much fun. Yeah. Great looking car. That leather is a little saggy looking. So much more comfortable. That's my way. The guy who drove this car was weighed at least as much as Thaddeus and myself. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's a 12,000 mile seat, dude. That shit is blown out. (laughs) And and the beautiful thing about these, they store so much shit. They do. They do. We used to transport, and also to your point about the baggy seat, like the fact that it can hold you two gentlemen Mm -hmm. comfortably. Because we used to- I couldn't put my seat all the the way back in my Mini. I had to use, I was like three clicks from the back. Yeah. And then I took my back seat out of mine. Because you're crazy. No, well, I should have put the the kit the re- I should have put the rear seat delete kit to to dampen some of the yeah. noise, which I didn't do, but I liked how it sounded. But I basically had a two seat car with a fucking trunk the size That's of huge. like an expedition's trunk. It was enormous. Mm-hmm. I put like the best. all kinds of shit. We put all of our camera things. gear back there. Love it. But then you know what I learned? I put my back seat back in, and I went oh. Yeah, the sound vibrate vibration dampening is actually good. <laughs> and you can just fold the, you can fold the seat like we used to drive you know, the Mustang just from with the camera refinement and everything good. else. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, the the seat folded down is a, gets you that a little extra. I don't know how we ended up on this, but a, an R fifty three John Cooper Works <laughs> low miles. I would love one is again. really worth twenty thousand dollars. Great, I'm telling you, sure. I want a Fiesta ST again. I want one of those again. 
I kind of miss the Fiesta ST a little it's bit. It's such a good car. Yeah, it was really good. Habibi, let's go halves. We put one in Dubai. Mm. <laughs> in Dubai? Ha- let's go halves. You have to fly business class around the world. <laughs> to a place that has no canyon roads. There's halves on a Fiesta ST is bad. less than a business class ticket to Dubai. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> you may get a phone call from me, Matt. There's a Fiesta at the doorsteps. Uh, One day I'd like, to, I'd like to close Jebel Jace again. That was that's worthwhile in Dubai. Dude, Where that's Zach's looking at now I'm getting lost. Looking Stop at getting lost. Looking at Ferraris but up there. It's a five fifteen. So. That's so good. That's easy. hopefully by the end of 2021, both of y'all can also buy Ferraris. That'd be excellent. Well, that I guess that's the it other question. Well, that brings the, us to the. To the Ferrari car. 348. Let's go to the Do you wanna, let's plug Roland, by the way, our friend, and he's now our friend. Yeah, Roland. This dude nice. Roland, he's on Turo. He uh, he's renting what I presume is the only Ferrari 348 Correct. for rent in Los Angeles. It's a 94 Spider, which That's is great. Nice. He was a very interesting dude. He came to drop it off, and apparently this guy who's renting it out, he's got like seven, eight cars. Look at it. He's it's got a Hellcat. He's fuck got me. It's five hundred dollars a day now. <laughs> oh, bro, son of a bitch. Oh, Habibi, you didn't miss oh, the fucking sale. Oh, I guess that's what I get. Well, you rented it on literally a holiday weekend, yeah, so you fine. probably were paying. You were paying Whatever. the rate. Oh, so I'm hitting the table again. <laughs> Stop hitting the table. <laughs> He's excited. The smoking tire can repay you once we get earn the rev share from the video because I made a video watch, with watch it. Watch the video. So this guy who owns this thing, and you should rent from him. He's the kind of guy awesome. who you should rent from in L. A. He owns and drives a Maserati Shamal, and. I, you know, I was going to ask him, like, how do you deal with the maintenance of a 30-year-old Ferrari rental car? And then he said he had a Maserati Shamal, and I went, oh, well, this Ferrari is fucking nothing. Um, how did you enjoy driving it, Thaddeus? Well, I've driven other Ferraris of similar eras, and it was really nice. It was really nice. I've driven the 355. I've driven the 308. Not, like, recently, but they're all, like, 348. Everyone says it's the worst Ferrari I don't think it's really that bad. Why do people say it's the worst? Just because it's not as pretty as a 355 and it's Correct. not as good as a 360 and they're just like, oh, this is... And also there's a, a big weird discrepancy era. between a, like a 91, 92 and a 94. So the story goes that they were making the 348. It was not very fast. It didn't handle very well and it had a tendency to snap over steer mm-hmm. and people didn't like it. And when Luca, I, I believe it's Luca came into Ferrari, he drove it, he didn't like it, and he said, fix this fucking thing. And they fixed it, they, they changed the suspension, they changed the wheels and tires, they changed the gear ratios, they changed the engine management, they changed the fuel management, they changed a lot, a lot. So much so that Donnie told us, you cannot turn a 91 into a 94. They changed that much. And so, I drove it too, and I have a video, and I thought it was very nice. I had an awesome time having driven modern things and faster things. Mm. Uh, Shout out to the homie Dave Feinsilber who gave me this bottle of uh, W.L. Weller original uh, special reserve for my birthday last year, and we are going to (laughs) fucking work our way right through that. It's a crew show. Um, For for driving experience, for the price point, um, awesome. I mean, it awesome. sounds. You, you know, drove because I drove. I drove an F8 recently. And, yeah. And the, to plug my own shit, the video aired on Haggerty recently. It's called Rated, and I was like, it's too quiet. And when Lee drove away from me doing a burnout, like at the end of it, I was like, it's. I it's could. Too I quiet. could talk, hear myself talk, and the microphone picked me up saying it's too quiet because mm-hmm. it's too quiet. But this thing just sounds so good. So yeah. Zach and Thad were driving the 348 down Upper Big Tahunga, and I was following in the <laughs> Alpina XB7. Which is like the opposite land of this thing. The Ferrari's like 3,100 pounds, 315 horsepower, 8,000 RPM, you know, but long gears, five speed, you know, long yeah. gears, narrow power band, fairly um, not clunky, but you have to shift gingerly. Whereas I'm in this 57, what's my note? How many? 6,000 fucking 50, pounds. No, that's not right. Wait, fifty fifty nine fifty pounds 
uh, 612 horsepower, eight-speed automatic, all-wheel <laughs> drive, active anti-roll control. And I'm just, you know, I'm following you guys because I want to stay behind you because God forbid something happened in the car. We had Chip Rollins. There's car no up. cell service. So I didn't want to just be like miles ahead of you guys or whatever. And so I'm behind I'm here. It's so good. Having a great time. And I am literally like. Yeah, the, the differential fucking speed. Fucking with the radio. Lead back, one-handed, massage seats, and and not even, you know, you guys were doing, it sounded like you were doing a pace, and I was like, da, 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 da. <laughs> And it felt like we were doing a pace, because at one point on the way down, go ahead. Well, yeah, we, I felt like doing a pace, because I haven't been in a fast-driven car for a while. I'm like, Zach's driving really quickly. Um, I, <laughs> I was driving medium slightly, quickly. I'm like- I was trying to chase some Porsches. I'm, my- Speed limit has changed apparently, because now I'm in my old like four by four from twenty whatever, and I just like cruise along. I'm like, oh, mountain roads, quiz, quick, turny turns, and all this stuff, and like, I drive slow now. You got to recalibrate, yeah, no, yeah, you must yeah, totally recalibrate, thing. recalibrate, recalibrate for the Angeles Forest, please. I don't drive racetracks very often, and when I do, it's usually after a very long break, yeah. and then same thing, I have to recalibrate. I'm like, yeah. oh, this is very scary. What are we doing right now? No, I, I have like, to recalibrate when I get off the racetrack and back on the highway on the way home, that's and it, I yeah, go, oh boy. That's why I think is it Willow you, that has signs that's like you are now entering public highway, <laughs> like, yeah. but you know, the, speed limits matter. Thunder Hill too. Thunder Hill, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, you need that. The you thing is that it's. You know, have to have to re- recalibrate, but it's not fast. Like, if I had cash, I could walk in and buy a seven six five LT whatever and go way faster mm-hmm. everywhere and be. You know, it's a different different thing. Like different this experience. is like mechanical. Things are moving. The pedal, you blip it. It like the engine does something. It's super. The steering fucking, angle is kind of weird. Yeah, it's, it's, nice. it's different felt, in the corners than I expected it to be. Like it didn't really roll that much, but that also made me feel like. If it ever slid, it would just start. Yeah. It wouldn't let but you know. Well, the non no power steering is good, I right? Love it. When you it, if you're not if you're not used to it, it's great when you get used to it. Yeah. When you get used to it, there's actually quite a bit of room in mm. the center, you know, so you have to you kind of set it, load it, and then steer from there. As opposed to modern cars where you really steer in the on center, you know, and so when you you have to look way ahead, you know, do you get your shift on a little slow, big big blip on the yep. downshift, and then just kind of you just when you set it, it's very satisfying. It's very nice. You have to feel confident in it to like go in, brake early, slow in, fast out, all that stuff, and get through it, and then you can start. But also mm-hmm. with a car of that vintage, I personally have no desire to find the limit. No, no I'm just I. I'm en- I'm more than happy enjoying the sensations of it, like um. Who's the homie? B is for build. Did he just buy that three hundred eight and he's gonna take? He took the oh. engine out of it. I don't know. I I, B, I, I, huh? I don't know. I don't know. I think it was B is for build. I thought he was the the, the guy up north with the boat and the like the the jumping hurricane, Huracan. Uh, well, didn't he L, did he LS swap a Huracan? He, he did. Might, I mean, he's done he's, a lot of stuff. He's gonna build a, so a jumpy know. one. I think I'm. I thought. With the Maybe Mustang it wasn't thing him. Is Maybe it was too, somebody else. I thought it was for someone who bought a 308. And it was yellow, and he posted a picture on Instagram of the engine of the Ferrari out and a turbo K24 going in, uh. which like, all right, you two build. I kind of get it. Yeah, Ferrari K24 engine swap. Maybe mm. something. I don't know. You find it, but um, th- I. It's not that I'm anti-tuner cars or anti-engine no, no, swaps, but. And I don't know the whole story, just what I saw on Instagram. Stanceworks. Yeah, swapping. Oh, Stanceworks, not B is for build. Sorry, Mike, it's Stanceworks. That looks like Malibu. Um And I, and I, and yeah, it's definitely, oh, that's, they, they, that's uh, yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, I respect his, his creativity and, and building, but I just don't think that's going to be good. Um, I don't, like, I'm a Ferrari fucking nerd. You have a tattoo. I do. Yeah. I am a Ferrari nerd. So... That's kind of like a little bit missing the point. The thing about the Ferrari is also very much so the engine. Right. It's about the vibrations, the the smoothness, the pulses. Like, if you want to make just a fast, light, old thing, there's, you know, there's Well, he paid a premium for a Ferrari. 
Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, like you could you could do that with an MR2, and you'd end up in a similar better. place. And like you have 1970s chassis tech yeah. versus 1990s chassis tech for an, uh, Mr. Two. Right. Like I drove. I drove a really big horsepower. I drove this dude uh, down in Texas. Um, oh God, and he's such a nice man. And I'm blanking on the name of his goddamn shop, Aaron. ATS, 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 okay. down of Texas. The guys, the guys are great, and he built, he put a turbo on a 308, and it was pretty fucking. It's cool. like the Bob Norwood. It was kind. a Norwood spec kit, okay, exactly. Because he's a fucking maniac. He's too. a maniac too. But I love it. It was like that, and this thing was like 570 horsepower, and in a straight line, it was the tits. It's Texas. But then you, you know, then you have to haul it down to the same kind of speeds to get it through the corners. These are and 1970 it, brakes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, the fucking exactly. maniacs. Yeah. Yeah. But so anyway, um, the 348 is lovely. I think. Yeah. Seven hundred bucks a day, well spent. You know. Well, it also gets you how close to a three fifty five for how well, how much less oh, money. Oh, that's what we're gonna say. The, the value wise, pretty goddamn close. Yeah. Actually, if you really wanted to nitpick and you drove them back to back, you'd go, oh, three for three fifty five is a six speed instead of a five speed. The engine revs higher. The engine revs faster. The Fifth engine valve. sounds better and makes more power. And it looks better. It also looks better. It also has power steering. It also has better air conditioning. Um, What's the interior look? Because the interior of the 348 more to me modern. Is, okay. It's a Slightly. little more modern. Same, it's a same more modern. idea, but more modern. Yeah, it's a little more well, modern. Like if you said, a volunteer. But outside of the, in terms of the Ferrari maintenance hierarchy, F50 is at the top. Yeah. F40 is right below it, followed by 355. If Enzo <laughs> is below that. <laughs> <laughs> if if three fifty five was an act of consideration, like I'd be about it. But it's the three forty eight interior doesn't bother me. Three forty eight is nineteen nineties nice. race car tech. The three five five has all this other shit associated with the cracked headers and then this and that and the they put like fucking too much. Formula One stuff in the engine and it's just crazy expensive to replace or yeah, repair. And, you know, and I love three fifty five so much, but it is not worth the goddamn headache. Like, yeah, but it's it's so pretty. But I I know better. <laughs> steering wheel's heinous in a three fifty five, isn't it? That well, airbag wheel. The nineteen ninety five one is the one though. The rest of the interior is I th I think it's much better looking. It is than, better uh, than the three forty eight. But the three forty eight from the outside looks it's the, really it's the cool. Same. It's By the same. By the way, the dash the, the, the dash upper is exactly the same. It's the yeah. bottom. Ha the dash yeah, they, lower. That's, well, the, that's the, the inch that I need. The dash lower is different. Uh, yeah. Which I do like, and and gear. the doors are different because the doors in the 348 look like they were movie prop doors to me. Yeah, but They're, they still have they still have the same kind of pull handle. They do have that the one. top, the weird yeah. top pull handle. They've only no, changed. It's just it. hidden a little bit better. Yeah, look yeah, at it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the They're top both pull's nice, funky. but the 348 is much cheaper to maintain. Okay, yeah. right, here's the and other. Buy. Here's the other question, since 348 prices will now be creeping after, after this, this show, fucking because yes. we're tastemakers. Yeah, we're like yeah. Yes. Um, 550s. I don't think that's a Thad car. I think that's a different kind of person. Car. Why isn't that a Thad car? I think they're. I like awesome. a little bit of canyon whipping, but I don't think the 550 is a canyon whip. It's a G. It's a GT car. Yeah, yeah. It where can are we handle, gonna go? It can, where but it's go? not. It's not going to be. Um, you know that that 12 isn't really a screaming 12. You know what I mean? It's a booming 12. It's sort of the same thing it's as my van. It's the same thing as my van yeah. vanquish. It's a lovely car, and they're known for being really reliable by Ferrari standards. The maintenance costs are reasonable by Ferrari no standards. I think it's one of the best car looking cars. It is ever. still an Italian Camaro, yeah. though. Fuck you! I'm I, you're right, and I'm upset. <laughs> Donnie it's calls them that, that but he but he means it in a good way. It yeah, means you can drive them. That. Well, that's like that's the thing about. I'd this. fuck with a 550 for sure, dude. I'd fuck with a 550. But I like your use patterns are canyony. I am, I bought a 328 to drive in the city. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you're a fucking weird. You're, I you probably won't count. even go in the canyons with that car. Occasionally, I would. I been. have to go in the canyons at least twice a week. Yeah. I don't go in the canyons on my free time. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's hard for you to believe. And it's hard for other people to believe too. No, but it's but I don't go in the canyons on my free time. I guess the the Malibu uh, Bills Cruise is I will, sufficient. I will do a. I will do if I'm in my own cars. I will. I will do especially in the summer. 
when it gets it's the light is a little earlier and it's uh, a little warmer. I will do a quick loop up the Malibu canyons in my own cars, but I almost never go to the can Angels you, Force in my can own you, cars. As a Ferrari nerd, can you promise for me, you and Hannah drive to, what is it, Los Olivos on the other side of Santa Barbara? Oh, we've been there. For the wine tasting? Yeah, we've been there. In the Ferrari, though. We can do that. That's the thing. That's easy. It's got a square boot that you can put a lot of wine cases <laughs> you in. You probably don't want to put wine in there because it's next to the <laughs> engine. It'll probably get hot. It's Italian. Why hot, wouldn't you can get I mean, wine hot? Why wouldn't no, you? No, you, you shouldn't. <laughs> no. That's no, you shouldn't. Yeah. It ruins it, the wine. Does it get that hot? It's next to the engine. I wouldn't put anything oh. anything that could be spoiled by being heated to over 90 or 100 degrees, I wouldn't right, put yeah, that. Definitely there. not in there. Yeah, I wouldn't I would I don't think pro You have to go do the wine tasting up there cuz that would be my Like if I would take the, I'd take take the Porsche and put the cases on the roof, <laughs> strap them down to the roof rack. <laughs> oh, How do you man. like your Weller? I love it. Did is you switch the, to the cheap shit yet? I have not, sir. We put out two bottles. We've got the Weller, which is very expensive, and it was given to me. And then we've got the JTS Brown, which Johnny Lieberman brought here and tried to be like, he tried to spool us up, like to be like, how much do you think it is? How much do you think it is? Like to be like, it was expensive. Right. And then we find that it's like $20 a bottle. Here's here's our problem, though. We When we grabbed this bottle of Weller, we said, we'll just have a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Did, I didn't say that. Did I, I say we, that? We said that. I don't we know. Said I'm not collectively. sure I ever committed to that. <laughs> and then we would, we would switch to I the cheap wanna, one. I don't want. But that's. I don't. One. You wanted to. I don't. I'm happy to fucking kill this. No, it's I don't. Bo good. The bottles are not meant to be saved. Bottles are meant to be Correct. finished. Like cars. Meant like to be cars. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That's exactly. I agree. Exactly. Things need we to be also, used. We uh, also went to visit Donnie uh, and went to visit my Ferrari. He is very optimistic. He's now actually, he described to us a lot of work that needed to be done. It didn't seem like, it was, it was like a lot of things, but it didn't seem like a lot. It's not that bad. No. Uh, we made a video. It will be airing shortly. Um, and uh, Donnie's Place rules. Um, yeah. It's really cool. It's really cool. It's really, very really dope. cool. Yeah. It, if, you know, when we went to Jay Leno's place and had all the murals on the wall, which are amazing and hand painted by like the NBC set people to mimic the French like racing uh, oh, the posters. The big banner things. Yeah, yeah. he had yeah, those. Yeah. So, but and they're probably very expensive. They're and they're amazing. They're amazing, amazing, gorgeous things. Donnie had like a version of that, which is just painted on a huge piece of plywood that yeah. was like thirty feet by twenty. It's feet. on. You can pull Fucking up uh, awesome. pull up the Instagram if it's there. You, I have a picture of it. Maybe that's what you need for that giant wall. You need something like that. A mural, like a giant but hung. Oh, not painted. yeah, yeah. May, oh, in, for, for, yeah, for in, in the, the, the main. Yeah, maybe if it's hung and not the, painted, that's that's a different thing. Just yeah, inside maybe. the the yeah. washing bay, because that wall is yeah. huge. But it's probably not the fucking code, apparently. Stop Everything. banging on the Sorry. table, you fucking shitbag. <laughs> Kill you. There it is. Stop, Zach. Up, up, right, silver. There. Uh, big painting. Big painting, Jaguar. Back up on the right there. I just thought it was mm. such a cool thing to add. You can add to your garage, and it doesn't have to be on canvas that you buy. You know, it's a super expensive piece of art. It's like, this is painted on plywood. Oh, it just occurred to me. I don't think that's Jaguar. I think that might be Carol Shelby's Aston Martin DBR1. Looks like it's got the little lipstick mouth on it. That looks a little lipsticky. Mm. Mm. We'll see. We'll see. Either way, Donnie has, since we visited him last week, been sending me lots of photos. Uh, he cleaned out. He poured it. He poured it and polished my intake manifold. Really? I love yeah. that. I Ooh, hope he was like, I don't normally do this, but I thought, yeah, I thought you'd appreciate it. Power. Took the limiter and off. He, don't tell he anybody. He poured it and polished it. He he said it was pretty gunked up because that leaky fucking injector, that fucked injector seal. Mm -hmm. He's like, so I had to like degunk it anyway, and so he's like, I might as well do that. But that's the thing about these old school shit. Like you can take it to Hot Rod Shop that does. 55 Chevys and you go pour and polish this mm -hmm. for you know yeah. however much that costs but it, to have it done your Ferrari race team it, it works be, it would be exorbitantly right. expensive even though the machining is the same the yeah. same yeah. is the same which is like this era of 90s race car before you get into GTB 488s and shit like that you can like still do mechanical shit yeah well the 308 28 and 48 are all the same engine. The same shit. With different size cylinder sleeves. Oh, really? That's it. Oh, shit. Yeah. They just put a fixed <laughs> sleeve in and different yeah. koozie? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's like a flashlight. And Mondial. <laughs> and Mondial. Oh, but um, what I was going to say about the 
Uh oh. Same flashlight. Same, same flashlight housing, just different. Okay. The three four eight same is interesting. Is that That's he what he said. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to figure it out. D- different, different grips. Different filling. <laughs> um, the different uh, amount of Jello. Okay. The three four eight was the end of Enzo's thing, so it was in that weird area of last Enzo touched into Luca. So like there was a crossover in the middle. That's why. I yeah, kind but of was Enzo weird. didn't really give a shit about the road cars. No, but this was the last thing he had input on. Yeah, which I think will matter in twenty years. It'll I matter don't. on the pamphlet when you sell the <laughs> yeah, car. Yeah, exactly. It'll be, it'll be one additional line on the. Phone. We're just <laughs> trying to <laughs> dodge depreciation that's and maintenance true. costs yeah, that's here. True. That's well, the that's, main. Goal. I think that's doable. I think, I think if your feasible. goal is not to invest, no. but to say drive the fuck how out. How many of it. miles can I put on this car? For less than it would cost me, and not for zero or not for mm-hmm. negative. Like it's you got to compare it really to buying a brand new car. I mean, it's the only other way to compare. Yeah. If you and, and if you compare it to other used cars, it's not going to work. No. But like, if you if you are considering a brand new car and depreciation, and how much a new car depreciates, I think. If you ever are interested in going, well, could I maybe daily drive an older car? What you would lack in depreciation, you might get a third of in maintenance. Yeah. You know? Like a fucking Mercedes that you buy right brand new depreciates like Dude, 25, look at AMG 30, GT 40, prices. $40,000, $50,000. Yeah, it's bad like, this. You know what I mean? Like, how would you buy an older Ferrari and drive fifty thousand dollars worth of value out of it? And for people other than you, you're buying into a hobby. Like, like right. some people are like, okay, so this costs me X per whatever, and then this is my uh, oh, there's a fucking delay. Um, and it costs X per weekend. Like, if you could go skiing every weekend, you know you're. Ski costs would be 150 bucks and mm. whatever. You can you can figure out all these these costs, but you're buying it like a hobby. It's yeah, a thing. Yeah, you're the weirdo though. But so, I'm a weirdo. Yeah, I embrace my fine. weirdness. Yeah, but yeah. that's kind of why we're sitting here and talking to yeah. people in a surreal manner. Uh, so I have a video of the 348 that's coming out. It's going to be fun. Um, it sounds very nice. Uh, I have a video of that Alpina. I have a video of this Defender. Um, Surprisingly, like no big wiggle, squeaky sounds in that Ferrari. I was really, really, really no, surprised. It was, it was, you know why? Miles. Driven. If it had no miles on it and the things didn't move a lot, you know, the suspensions like lubri- are self-lubricating kind of as they move up and down. And if the, like, when I don't drive one of my old cars for a while, first couple of miles are creaky and then the lubrication gets circulated and then it's okay. I suspect that Ferrari gets driven enough. Where it doesn't dry out ever. I mean, but even like the body, the door handle, like that shit wasn't falling off. Yeah, which I, fine. I don't know much about old Ferrari, so I was just expecting. Other than that one window jiggly switch, jiggly. it was okay. That window just was meant to be down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Or up, either one, just don't change your mind. My 328 is a little more jiggly. And you don't really notice it when the target top is removed completely. You notice it when the target top is installed because it squeaks. <laughs> um, In the truest Italian fashion. <laughs> it's a little jiggly, but it's not more jiggly than other the, 80s cars. The, the, more, the more and more I thought about it, like the jiggle bits, I didn't really mind. It's like I'm not setting lap times. It's like, oh, this was a, I'm noting that it jiggles. And both of you guys thought that the jiggle was worse than I thought it was. Yes. And I drive more cars than all of you guys. Wait, which car? 348? Yeah. Both of you guys thought the lack of rigidity was more of a problem because it was a spider than I did. You no, both, I didn't care. It, it was a noting, I think, yeah. rather. It was I like, didn't, I didn't I know. That, that was this. trying to sell us on a coupe as if he had one at his house. How many times during the day did he say, a roof fixes all these problems? It does. And neither you nor I, Matt, were saying that anything had any about pro- problems. Yeah, no, We yeah. weren't pushing back against yeah. it at all. <laughs> he kept saying, a roof fixes all these problems, and neither Zach nor myself noted any problems whatsoever. I started just saying <laughs> drink every time you said it. The, the jiggleness, the I think. It, it's noticeable, because it goes back to, well, I guess, roll back a little bit. I rode in my friend's 348 uh, GTB in Dubai which was 
really nice. So I was like, oh, this is like, there's no 355 problems. There's no 328 Was it a thing. GTB? It was. So a GTB is a, a 94 coupe. Yeah. A 91 really to 93 nice. is just a TB coupe. Yeah. Which would, just for the people out there. It would be nice to get for my initials. To be fair, the roads there are also like smooth enough that Charlie oh. Sheen would do coke off of them. So. I forgot how bad the fucking roads were here. It's like, <laughs> it's they're like, bad. Oh my God. They're bad. That's why like, you want a Defender. Yeah. I <laughs> Defender for <laughs> right. We Overland can shoot Ferrari. pool anywhere on any highway in Dubai. This is so rough. Yeah. There's a ju- out in front of your place has a wheel eating pothole. In when we're coming in, the oh, way. in front road. of West Side, yeah, oh, yeah. by in front of the gas station, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Corner from Skid yeah. Row again. To the I other. should have had that. They made me build a fucking road. I should have been like, "Hey, boys, fill that hole over there too." Huge hole. Yeah, yeah. we can just dump sand in the night. That hole is getting really bad. Like that's crazy. <laughs> but I live <laughs> bad in that hole. It really is. That's a I live bad in a kingdom. Hole. I can't fucking You'll talk. You'll fuck a car up in that. Oh, one. big yeah, time yeah, yeah. on a bag Mercedes. <laughs> that's not making well, its I, way. I fucking drove that way there. with the the Alpina, and my girlfriend was following me in her fit, and I went. I straddled the hole, and I was like, I should have gone. And I just watched her in the background, like <laughs> oh, her side dip three just inches. A crash. In oh, oh. What are you yeah. gonna do? That's madness. You know, I I have to say, I liked the Alpina. A lot more than I thought I would. I think the M2 CS and the Alpina XB7 might be BMW's best product. That's a great right now. two car garage. The XB7 is the kind of thing that, you know, I generally disdain, even though I in, I disdain the existence of it because it's gluttonous, but I oh, I enjoy fun, using Matthew. it. The, the, it was it was really very nice. It was a very nice thing. I loved it. <laughs> I thought it was it was so spacious. The massage seats yeah. were really good. The, it was the ride was exceptional. Seats were great. The seats the were shape fucking of the seats were great. great. Yeah. yeah. No, no, and no, I like the interior look. The way the way the wood the yeah. wood accents made that interior look better than that, any the, other new BMW I've been yeah. in a long time. It's silly. Yeah, it's, it's definitely silly a car that nobody it's, needs. It's 600 something fucking horsepower. It moves and sways. You got all the luxury. It's great. Right. It was and a lot of people really buy that fast. car are probably exactly. buying like <laughs> organic stuff and trying to yeah. recycle and then you're you're driving a 6000 pound it's like, 600 horsepower SUV, but honey, I've bought the Alpina because they don't donate half of their money to the Alpine force. Well, but, <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, you can like, it's a different you, way to you lie can, to your you wife. Can, it's not yeah. an M. No, then then you fucking boot it. I think it's awesome. It was really interesting because so so it's weird that BMW has two in-house tuning companies, isn't it? That's weird. Is it like, in-house or is it a Yeah, it's in-house. I mean, it's adjacent, but that car is built on the line. Okay. It's it's developed over here, well, what, but then it's built right next to all the there other There weren't any other like we're some body kit shit on other than wheels, right? Front It has a different front, front and rear okay. and rear bumper. Yeah. But the like, front, that's you didn't like, notice the fucking air dam on the... No, but like, it's a clip-on thing. It's not like a major... No, it's a whole front bump. It's the lower. Okay. It's the lo- below the below the headlights, isn't it? Easy. But... On the, you yeah, you built it on the line. Yeah, yeah you built it on the line. At. Yeah, yeah, it's built, it's built in the factory. It's not yeah. some post-title fucking thing. But, um, so like, Alpina is for when they want to make BMWs go faster, but the M division is like, pass. <laughs> so that they are like, we have this X7, and the M division's like, no, nine, pass, <laughs> right? Yeah, right. We are the ultimate driving machine. Right. Like, what happened with the X5? This like, is too big. <laughs> this is for the Americans. Right. We, yeah. If it doesn't Kinda, have a yeah. slopey back, they don't fucking care anymore. No. Um, so they don't want to do it, right? They don't want to do it. So Alpina gets it, right? I think, and 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 they're like, yes, we're about this life, and uh, yeah. What was cool about it? Was that it wasn't it cl- so clearly wasn't an M, like it it yeah. was clearly not a fucking M. Like it didn't have M seats. Yeah. It didn't have like a racing steering wheel, and it, it didn't wasn't have like sprung racily. Right, right. And yeah. when you drove it, it pitched and dove and rolled kind of like a trophy truck. You like, know what it was? It was old money versus new money. Right. <laughs> like the attitude of it, because it was like, let's make something comfortable that is also powerful and right. very nice inside. Doesn't look unassuming from the outside, but it's not a Gambala saying, look at all the money I have. Someone come and you know, break my window. Yeah. Versus I think a lot of the SUVs nowadays fall into this thing of every, like the M cars or other cars have to be so stiff. Yeah. They want you to feel the sportiness every second, even if it's uncomfortable. And this is just 
That's kind of the new money no, style th- of performance. This thing fucking. It was nice. When you hooked it around a corner, it sort of rolled like a tr- like a trophy truck moved. But it you was could, really interesting. You could mob in that thing if you didn't care for your twenty three inch wheels. Well, if they were small, it needs twenties. It needs twenties or twenty yeah, well, twenties. So, so the standard wheel is a twenty one. Needs that. We had the optional twenty three, which is the beautiful a million spoke joint. I know? love them. I, they Too look many fabulous. I, um, you don't like Alpina wheels? No. I love Alpine. Clinton Alpino hates Alpine. Alpino Clinton's not about Alpine wheels. No, because he there's is a the million spokes. He has to detail the shit, right? Huh? Doesn't oh, Clinton? That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> that's a good point. Oh, he's a good kid. No, he, Clinton's he's great. All your people, uh, we haven't talked about, all your people here are fucking awesome. We don't need to start, we don't need to start doxing my employees here. No, but they're awesome. They, they didn't sign, they didn't sign up for this. <laughs> they are good people. Um, but the, Al- the I got, wait till you see the video, because... You know, it's calm, it's mellow, but the pace, the pace is high. The pace is very high. And it maintains, like, you know, I had that Hellcat Durango, which was very quick. And and for what it was, for the money, was excellent. Yeah. But you could, you know, you really saw to have that and then have this sort of similar thing from BMW that was like, okay, yes, it is double the price, yes. But it was... It was nice, nice. Have you driven a Cullinan? I have not. Have I'd you? like to. I under. I could. I could pretty much guess what it would be like because I know it's platform shared with X7. That's what I was getting at. I. I can tell. I can tell. I can feel the. I've driven all the other ones. I can feel the Rolls Royceness in it. I can totally see the grill swap and be in the same <laughs> yeah, fucking grill swap for sure. Like the Chrysler 300. I would like to drive a Cullinan. I haven't driven a Rolls Royce since Pearl Jam 2017, I think that was. It may have been a reason. When was that? When I went to Detroit 2017? Oh, you drove the it there. One. 18, the orange one? It was a long time ago. You gotta get on top. a fucking it's a long rollers ago. list again. I don't... Yeah, I don't know why about, I'm what about, not. What about I, Bentley? I drove the new GTC. It was fucking the fabulous. Big, the big fat one. No, the, the new Coupe, yeah, yeah, the yeah. GT, the convertible. Awesome. It was amazing. I saw a testing one in the UK, and I was like, came around a corner, still in camera, I'm like, that's the new Bentley? This is awesome. Dude, it's it like, looks oh, great. It, the yeah, interior is like off the charts. And then I took it in the canyons, and the handling yeah, was absolutely awesome. fucking extraordinary. They do good stuff. They make a very nice car. They make Dude. a very, very nice ha- car. All right, so have you, since I deal with a lot of the, the lovely Brits in the Dubai, um, the Dubai. Have you checked it in Mulsanne prices here? Versus They're not as cheap as they are in the UK. Okay. You, you informed me that the Bentley Mulsanne is currently, it costs about the same as a fucking price of a pair of Yeezys. Le- less than the Defender. <laughs> in, what? In, uh, it's cheap. In, right, right hooker Mulsanne's are like 55 uh, pound. So it's less than a Defender. I'm sorry. Let's back it up. Did you just use the phrase right hooker? Right hooker. Yeah. yeah. That mean right hand drive? Yeah. Right hooker. It's been gone a long time. Right hooker. You know what's funny? You say that, but you don't. Do, you do they you also say sh- left hooker? <laughs> any yeah. Arabic at all? They do. <laughs> yeah. Hooker. hooker. That's a driver. Yeah. Is that a dri- that's a driver? That's in like general? driver side. Like right hooker, hooker. left hooker. Hmm. You live in Dubai for five what years. Let's bank that British one. Slang uh, for wait, later. is that not a, like that? No, the they don't time? say that in California. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Fair. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> hooker? No. Yeah, right they hooker. Don't say right Love hooker. hooker. No, that's not a. Then no, that hasn't. That hasn't made it from Staffordshire to, to, to fucking Culver City yet. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> What's Hannah funny. driving today? The right hooker. She is. She's That's driving a beautiful the right thing. Hooker. I drove it like ten feet. <laughs> I'm concerned that because uh, that that ultimately we may have to get her a vehicle that will go over seventy miles an hour. Get her oh, ultimately. I but I'm I'm so happy Polaris that she doesn't want right, uh, turbo. I'm happy that she doesn't want that. An R32. You know how nice it is <laughs> to have a wife that is perfectly happy to drive a thirty year old fucking minivan. That's right hand drive. It's right hand drive. And well. that the insurance company pays me every year to insure. <laughs> oh, because it's so because it's offset slightly. You didn't know that? Uh-uh. Oh yeah, because I insure the the I insured the nine eleven and the Lamborghini with Haggerty. I love Haggerty. 
And then I got the van, insured the van with Haggerty. And they go, oh, well, that's kicked in your multi-vehicle discount. Well, how nice is that? Well, not only did it kick in the multi-vehicle discount, but the relative value of the van compared to the other two cars was so low that it brought my premium down by $85 a year. They're like, please drive this. So I actually, yeah, the insurance premium on the van is negative $85. They pay me. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it offsets the Countach. <laughs> well, we're talking yeah. about the madness of insurance on the way over here from the downtown. Like, I, I paid more for the car or for the insurance and the car payment for the Fiesta, or it was one to one. It was basically the fucking same for insurance in Venice Beach. Yeah, it's wild. Wait, car what? insurance is a lot. Yeah, car insurance, car insurance, insurance is huge. Yeah, it was the same. Well, especially in Venice. Yeah. Holy. What? It's the same thing. But I think I paid Venice is a bad is bad is a bad place to yeah. insure a car because of the Which of makes all sense. The on my birthday that one year someone yeah. threw a forty ounce bottle of beer through the back window. Yeah. <laughs> you get yeah. I mean wow. honestly yeah. that is totally justified, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah and my focus RS I parked it on the street three days out of eighteen months and it got keyed. Remember that? It got keyed across three panels? I'm convinced that there was a person that knew it was me. I think well. Anyway, I'm, I'm, we'll talk about this later. I'm just saying, the the premium for insuring a car in Venice <laughs> is absolutely justified right. because yeah, you and I sense. both experienced Venice-related vandalism. Why do they vandalism. hate blue Fords? That's a problem. Yeah. We didn't file, we didn't file claims that were fucking our fault. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like- that's Yeah, remember that? You remember when someone just- Do you think that was also- I think it was also related. It's related to B. Yeah, I think so. Because it, like, it's not a you subtle You can't car. just say things on the internet and then have a car that's identifiable. See, that's a real problem. Says Be the red Lamborghini man. <laughs> Nobody would dare fuck oh, with that no. car. I would hope not. Nobody would dare fuck with that car. And I never liked that car. And I'd never leave it parked on the fucking... No. I'd never leave that car. Not going to parallel that overnight? No. Like the Neptune's net but problem. I think, <laughs> yeah, we came out and we the, the Fiesta ST was, was on my street birthday. parked. It was on my birthday. Was it... It was. Was there anything that made it identifiable as ours? I well, I think a Cobb license plate. Frame. The Cobb license plate frame. Venice Beach. That was that it. I think I saw a post somewhere about something um, that like oh, the Thad car or something about. I don't know. I don't know if that one was like my Focus RS was pretty easily identifiable as mine. With them wheels, son. No, it was before I put the wheels on it. Right. It was, but I had uh, Mountain badges. Yeah. And I had, I was, it was pretty. It would have been easy to identify. Um, and someone keyed that. But we came out to the Fiesta. Someone had thrown yeah, a it, full forty ounce beer through the fucking hatch glass. And just both had shattered into the car. Yeah. What a fucking disaster. My birthday, no less. Ugh. Cons. Ugh. Cons. People are such shitbags. How are we not talking about the people who fucking terrorists <laughs> who stormed the Capitol yesterday? The fact that we're talking about anything else besides but that. I think we're, we're trying to do bury your head in the sand. I think the right no. now for this time... This like, will be like a week later anyway. That'll before be all you showed up at the shop today, yeah. before you came back from lunch at the shop and I was here like by myself for a couple hours, I was straight like doom scrolling. <laughs> I was. I was straight doom scrolling Twitter for like two hours. There's some really and great I did memes it, though I that did make it you last feel night too and I was just like. It's madness. I you was, just can't get stuck in there because like nothing you madness. do on Twitter is going to change what. I didn't do anything. Did. No, no, I, I was just trying to be informed. Right, I right. was trying and to. Eventually, you can get caught in like the, the current, and then you're you're not learning new things. You're just yeah. seeing more stuff. Yeah, and that's the difference. You're yeah. in public freak out watching people yeah. get shot in the face. Yeah, yeah. I, I, this is taking a turn. <laughs> no, I, you know, you know. But it's, I think we're same. acknowledging the fucking space that we're in. While well, I go back same. to my lovely I, kingdom, I would prefer. <laughs> good point. To lose an election and retain democracy. Just saying. Yeah, I'd prefer uh, that okay. out, outcome to what those people think should be the outcome <laughs> when you go into the Capitol with Confederate flags and Nazis, Nazi flags. Just, just saying. Uh, should we go to the people? Is it that time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got the, we got a lot. I of questions. saw a minute ago you like put up questions, and I was like, "Oh, should we? Is it? Did I miss something?" We got about three. Oh, there's pages a lot of questions. Okay, great. 
Uh, I'll, we'll, we can accept them for a few more minutes and then we'll cut them off because we can't be here all night. But I want to <laughs> also, if you were listening to the Magnus show, it seemed as if I was dismissive of some questions. I would like everybody to understand that it's not always the case, <laughs> but sometimes the questions are literally all the same. And even if people donate money, like I, I it's not... First off, if you donate money, it's not always a guarantee. That's not. This isn't a, a necessary quid pro quo. That's just how you get on the radar. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I appreciate all the donations. And, and I, but but ultimately, we want. We we're trying to do a good show. And if seven people ask a point one degree variant of the same question, because I got some messages from people that weren't so happy that I didn't read their question. Well, what's the other questions is it like what's the difference between they the were 20,000 25 30 I had 10 people that all asked a variant of what's the best value in water cooled the, Porsches they've been answered and, and there is none because it's a bubble and it's going to pop well we went yeah. through, we went through like <laughs> three or four of kind of the same thing and then I just dismissed the rest because it was literally going in circles it's not a good show yeah, <laughs> well, the, the, the one we skipped at the end was i, I re it really read like it was Almost exactly the same as the one we answered at the, at the beginning, and I feel I, I hope that that person listened to that first answer and was like, "Oh, okay, this applies." This I is really. Hope, just I <laughs> hope that the person who wrote me the angry email mm. tuned into the podcast late and will realize when it actually airs that I answered something very close to what they said. It really did. Before. Yeah. This is an exercise in viewer retention. If you are a fan and want answers, <laughs> watch the whole thing. Because yeah, we yeah, touch no, about don't like because we're so fucking in and out book. though. No, of, look, of people ADD. are nice and they mean well, and yeah. sometimes, but 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 sometimes they think that they they made this donation, and and that's a direct quid pro quo, and sometimes they get kind of mad if we don't get to it for one reason or another, and and and. The answer is that we are trying to do a good show, and if there's a 0.1 degree variation on the thing, we might not be able to do that. I'm I hope to, most <laughs> people understand this. I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm trying to make a non-cancelable analogy for this. I can't I wait. I mean, I you can literally use almost no, all the words in the dictionary, with other than like <laughs> seven and not get canceled, so I believe in you. The, I, I was watching the comedy store. Yeah, You know, we the comedy to, store documentary the, the on things. Showtime, we were watching it, and... You know how we made the Can't Get Fired Productions TV t shirt mm -hmm. that nobody bought? You they know, don't get it. The fourth episode of the Comedy Store thing. What? You don't get it? No, those people don't get it. No, no. The, these comics were talking about the fourth episode of this five part series is all about pretty much comics and their podcasts and how the pod, co podcasts dr bring traffic to the comedy yeah. clubs, right? They all go on each other's podcasts. They all talk about the Comedy Store. Mm -hmm. Then everybody goes to the Comedy Store, right? But. All of a sudden, it was like, uh, it's fucking 2021. And like a revelation, these people are talking about, we can't get fired. It's like, I literally made a can't get fired productions t-shirt like <laughs> se seven years ago, six years ago. Anyway. Well, I, we've talked about it before, though, but I feel like we've been too early often. We talked about that with JF on the show. We were mm -hmm. too early on video on demand. The house. Too early we on paid subscription. Too early on the incub the, the the YouTuber incubator yeah. house. We could have been making that. Um, what's his name? The the boxer kid, Paul fucking money. A uh, Logan Paul. Oh, Jake Logan Paul. Yeah. Jake Paul. I mean, fucking I don't money. Want to be fighting other <laughs> random I'll take YouTubers. It. You will. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. We're gonna have this sure. dude, Colin, uh, Collins uh, Key, on the podcast. He's one of those YouTubers who's got like 20 million subscribers. It's amazing. Makes all this money. He does these huge money videos where it's like, I filled a. Olympic swimming pool full of jello. So cool. And I met him and he was he was a fan of our show. He's a younger guy. He's like twenty two. He looks like a fucking supermodel. He looks like Leonardo DiCaprio. It drives me insane. We're too early. Uh, and he's gonna come on the show. I mean, he's gonna, some things he's early gonna doesn't tell help. us what it's like to be a YouTuber with that much money and it's, fame. It's Look so, at him. I hate yeah. how handsome this gentleman is. He couldn't be nicer. He loves cars and he's a fan of the smoking tire. And, and he's got his brother, uh, whose name is Devin, and I oh, met them both, there. and they have like fucking 30 million subscribers, and I hate them for that, and I hate them for their looks, but I like their personalities but very I'm, much. They're I'm, very imagine nice. our <laughs> lives back in the day going through the house, having all to vlog all the time. Right. Yeah. No, living, yeah. It would have been fucking crazy. Yeah, like, no, I saw them living doing in their the basement. Thing. Oh, 
Tom's awake and <laughs> yeah, we yeah, were at exactly. the Peterson. I saw them and I saw them that's doing crazy. their thing, and I was like, ah, I'm not going to do that. That's not like no. That's a very big difference between our generation and yeah, this bro, generation. But Collins, Collins is you like, couldn't. Collins do it. is under thirty, bro. The oh, homie was wearing the homie the was AP. wearing the AP of course perpetual gold. gold. <laughs> Bro, I love it. AP, I love it. Those mean Zach. I know. I the have hand. the. I have the first. The first part of that. <laughs> I have the, just the AP. I have the per- Wuhan special. Gold. Double it. Perpetual. Quadruple that. That's the perpetual calendar that knows all the dates. It's fucking some next level horology. It's crazy. Cr- it's crazy. It's like some He's of these... 23 is rocking. It's, it seems like. You have the Athens <laughs> Signet and he has the Valkyrie. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's. I'm knocking on the door and he is jerking off in the bathtub. They, <laughs> I think it's awesome that this is a, a thing now. And I'm glad that people that want to be like creative in the shit we were doing, trying to do top gear for internet, like can be a thing now. Mm-hmm. Auto like, Tempest I'm, is supporting. Auto Tempest like, has been good about I'm that. I'm annoyed that. I didn't get the cash out of that way <laughs> for this way. Well, you went to but, Dubai. If yeah. you stayed. No. <laughs> if you stayed, no, you'd we, be rich we, like me we, and we couldn't do the fucking, uh, I don't think that's in our personalities, the talk to the camera all the time. And no, this. no, no. No, but no, it's no, weird, no. It's weird to watch the, the whole thing go in a circle where like, we started out making long form, high value internet content when RevShare didn't really exist. That got us all the jobs we got. Yeah. Then it be, and then everyone got into the vlogging thing, shorter, like simpler form, which brought about one takes. And now it seems like some of it has gone back to like, like straight pipes and other people like throttle house that they they're shooting things like we used to shoot in 09 mm-hmm. and t- in twenty ten. But now Brand red share partnerships are a thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, you mean a, your car show wants free tires and cash? If you yeah, live right. somewhere outside of Los Angeles, the math works pretty good on doing basic production values for videos now, if you're them. Mm-hmm. Or even if you're us. If we lived in Canada, <laughs> not LA. Arizona. Arizona. That money would carry into some production value. Whereas it does not here, and because we remain cynical. But now we make a po- yeah, also. The, but, but now we have a podcast, which is easier, less sunburn. True. We're also, also very close to forty. And also, us. one takes are endearing to a lot of people. I mean, I that's a it. format that we excel in, and a lot of people, um, even if they're very good at their jobs, need to be edited. And if I have anything going for me in my whole life, so that I can talk for eighteen minutes about a car. And you don't have to fucking edit it, and it'll sound like I have some idea what I'm talking. I about. do have a problem, though. Uh, which a major one? problem is the fact that it's like, oh, let's see what kind of possible car to buy or look or learn about. And Matt fucking Farah is in every fucking video. You can't Google anything, anything car related without. Oh yeah, no, bro. We, just I can set just your browser act, in incognito act, mode. I would like to say <laughs> uh, good job on me for adding a lot of good tags. To Thank things. you for that. I, I think it's excellent <laughs> for the SEO. But it's, I, it's like, oh, what do you think about this? I'm like, I don't know. Matt's probably done a fucking video audit in the past decade. That was of the, that was a strategy. I mean, I consciously reviewed cars that existed weird before shit. Cool. anything that came out before YouTube. That was what mattered. Yeah. Before journalists made YouTube videos on press launches, that was all that mattered. And it was a successful strategy, and it has paid off in the long game the because, catalog, because I'll find shit in the back catalog where it's like, I drove some Civic or some fucking Neon or some random ass sh- yeah. thing that, you know, oh, it did 120K in the first week, and I went, oh, okay, cool, that's nice. I go back eight months later, it's 800K? Like, whoa! Where that comes from? That's wild, you know, isn't it? Well, it it did the thing that I hypothesized that it would do. Yeah, it's guess awesome. I was smart. Yeah, it's like don't I think worry, it, I've had dumb shit too. <laughs> I fucking ruined our channel for two years. Oops. Oh, from what? By putting the podcast on the same channel as the videos. Oh, did we have like a guy come what? in? What? And do like the the analysis on shit? yeah Doug Demuro oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, quirks and features of your YouTube channel uh, you're deleting Rev Share by having no yeah no we you know we yeah we we learned we learned we fucked up no, but that was, I mean that was I a business a, just a bad business decision but what are you gonna do you no know, it's such it's such a wild thing from uh, way back what was it ten or fifteen at it, the fucking party right I but have it photos just, of that it drives me insane because. 
when you have a million subscribers and they're just they're not getting fed your content because your algorithm has residual fuckery yeah. because you made a bad decision. <laughs> the, I, a bad decision <clears throat> lasted two and a half years. <laughs> we're like, hey, this um, is doing really well. It's cool. Uh, uh, relationship uh, joke. Insert here. <laughs> but Zach and I's payroll, our payroll started this week. Nice. So we have a we have actual payroll. Muscle. Yeah. Ha, like a real company that like has wages. Yeah. <laughs> like it's fucking crazy. It's so like, dude, this I mean, we've talked about it enough, but like it's fucking wild. It's crazy. Yeah. It's so crazy that it started from shut up Darla to a fucking nice table. To a live a, a live things. edge uh, black walnut table you with know, a resin edge. Not and a bunch of bottles. Three hundred dollar bottle of fucking <laughs> scotch. <laughs> And we that we the tradecraft farms is paying us to smoke. We don't have to edit out the bong rips anymore. <laughs> no, but we don't. We don't. I mean, it would be uncouth to take bong hits. The, we, this, the technology. Imagine we could go back to 2011 podcasting and be like, guys, how quiet would it be? There's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> we're all been slightly quiet because we're, we're drinking way more. I also don't recommend listening to those early ones. Oh, no. There is some fucking. There's, the fans seem to have a good time with it. Every once in a while, I'll get an email from someone who's like, I started at one. And I'm like, oh, Ugh. God, here we go. What number is this But one? they usually- 590. We're almost at 600. Yeah, they're getting close to 600. Does that mean I have to come up with a plan with something to do? For six hundred, no, for six six six. We've never done that before. So <laughs> no, no, you should do it for the six 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 number. We should do it for six six six, and, and that's it. You know. For six six, okay. If we do it for a thousand. We, we right. sacrifice a lot. Maybe of for six hundred, I will make like a a request towards like a really famous person that I don't wouldn't normally ask. I'm to here do already. Anything. I'm sorry. Like it's not. Yeah, well, you came here voluntarily. Sorry, I didn't have we, to ask you. What's your name? I forget. I got to make a little bit third. Let's put it up um, there. All right, you want to go to the? Let's go to the people for a bit. We have the things. We've got. We've just still got. Just, we've still got bourbon. It. Don't worry. But is How the ice we, melting? What, We're gonna need to tap into Zach's ice. I got some more ice. What time is it? Who gives I, a fuck? I mean, like, are we like on track of? We make the timing, track. We pave the track can we as just we go. do one of these I, extra long this ones? This is Minecraft where we, we make the are road going as we to drive. do a podcast until we are done doing a podcast. Okay. That's. I wasn't sure if there's like an algorithm timing. Thing. I'm putting my COVID fingers in here. Doesn't matter. For the it record, doesn't. we've all gotten lots of COVID tests, and so we're in the bubble for people who are, if you're at home. Fat has <gasps> literally been living in my house for 10 days. Yeah, they, we do they not have fucking COVID right we're now. Right. If we did, it would have been, it would have been. Uh, Raging through. It would have been raging through. would have come to a head. Very. <laughs> <laughs> Although, you know, I had, I had to say, you know, um, but our, my housekeeper, who is a, a just couldn't be a more oh, lovely Mercedes. person and couldn't work couldn't work hard, you know she went she went to see her family and so then she came back to work, you know, and I we have to like now hide from her for like at least a couple weeks, you know. And she's wearing a mask and if we if we're even like I'm like hiding in my in like my corner and like Hannah's like Away. hiding in her Which office. Which corner is your just corner? In the guest bedroom. Oh, the, the desk. Where my where my desk is. It's like up in the corner. I'm just imagining you crouching in a corner. Oh no! I'm, yeah, I'm literally I'm hiding. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just cowering sheets. in a corner. Uh, yeah, and no, but uh, it's 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 kind of weird. I want to like run away. <laughs> uh, I had to see say out of Mercedes. Of course you do. Of course yeah. you do. Uh, where are we going with that? Question? Oh yeah, he lives in the house though. Yeah. So he's in yeah, the, he doesn't have fucking. We're too fucking late now. Yeah, <laughs> he had to take a test to get on the plane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We made him take a test to come in the house. <laughs> yeah, I around. took a, I took a test for fun. While he, well, well, here's here's the beauty of the American medical system. Uh, <laughs> the I left and it was like. 25, 30 bucks for my tests. So they go stab me in the fucking brain. I lay in here, I'm like, it's gonna be twenty five, thirty dollars. Uh two hundred and fifty fucking dollars yeah, later. It's not good. It's like that's wow, why we, this that, is why but was it the best brain stabbing you'd ever had? I bet it was. Because that's because we're, we're the best. I didn't See, have to wedge my head against no, the eight pillar, but it was gentle. The best here. Capitalism yields the most efficient medical <laughs> results. That's what you're not understanding. <laughs> if you lived in a capitalist culture, your uh -huh. system <laughs> would be much more efficient than it was, and you would save money like I'm saving money. <laughs> yeah, my capitalist esque <laughs> structure ah, works great. Fuck everybody. No, anyway. but I, I did love the super stonier surfer doctor. It's like, yeah, bro, we'll come fucking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we went to get the, and so you register at the at the the desk, which is outside the the yeah. place, and then you wait in your car, and they they and then they call you, and they go, which car are you in? Okay, we're coming over. 
it's, like, it's actually a pretty good system. It's nice. And so uh, we come over and they go, okay, like, what's your story? Why are you here? And I'm like, I'm here for fun. And he's like, yeah, I just flew in from Dubai. And all of a sudden the doctor's like, really? What's the party scene like over there? No, well, yeah. <laughs> and wanted to know all about it's vacation. Like, can you like go to clubs? <laughs> like go to bars? Like what's going on right now? I'm like, <laughs> he's like, because I'm making loot, because he's charging you all two hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah, because he looks, stick. he looks like early weed doctor, like yeah, you know, skinny guy, nice, like the scrubs fit all nice, nice facial hair. Bro, well, they yeah, probably like, charge him two forty cash. They probably charge my insurance company like a thousand for the same thing. It was too funny though. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what's the Wait, they do insurance and it was two hundred fifty dollars. No, I didn't. Uh, ins- if you have insurance, it's free. Okay. Yeah, that's why I go for fun. Well, that's if, why I go like all the time. If we had Obamacare. <laughs> yeah. If my wife didn't work for a fucking the, one, one of the of most them? important companies in America right now, I wouldn't. And and Zach's fucking girlfriend works for an equally uh, Another significant one tech company. Yeah. Ruining She's the fix world, my spine. both of you. Yeah, and Zach's gonna have back surgery <laughs> on that dime. And I go through, go to all the physical therapy on my yeah. wife's insurance You've company's You've been very time. efficient on physical therapy for a my long time. My wife got me to start going to doctors. Yeah. I didn't have insurance forever. I've, this is like, since when I moved to Dubai, I had together, insurance. She was like, you have insurance now. And I was like, she's like, you need to go get a physical right now. Cause you, and I went and got a physical. And it turns out, because it had been six years since I had a physical. Yeah. Did you go to Donnie for the physical, too? He's like, here's the things that are wrong. <laughs> I have to recap me and play. <laughs> you need a port and your, polish. Your ring seal is blown <laughs> out, That's sir. what's up in the apartment up there. <laughs> <laughs> the gimp? <laughs> turns out I was fucked. And I'm glad I did. So I wish I could have learned that earlier. Maybe I'd be less fucked. Maintenance <laughs> on cars and humans. Yeah. Uh, is important. Yeah. Well, th- I heard they moved the age down for the. For the butthole? Yeah. Well, I just had my 39 physical, and he, he go, he's all, prepare your butthole. And I was like, <laughs> okay. And then right before sticking his finger in my butthole, he goes, hang on a second, 81? And I go, yeah. He goes, you're 39? And I go, yeah. He goes, you're kidding. Yoink, and takes the gloves you're, off. He goes, put your pants back on. You're fucking I lying. S- <laughs> no. Swear to God. Spared a year. <laughs> wow. I got a reprieve. <laughs> If there's a science I don't trust, it's that one year makes that big a difference. Tell me, you went to the same physician as me. I didn't. I, I only went once. I didn't go three. I didn't go just for three a, years. It was just a light fondling. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's good to not fuck it now. Yeah, I, I mean, in, in America anyway. Oh. I don't know about Dubai. So, what are we gonna have to do for our forty and a half birthday? Because you're close. Then we have to split the difference. I mean, for you ours. mean other than get a finger in my butthole? Yeah. My physical. After that, after we celebrate, we can do that in a circle. Because <laughs> we're, we're all holding hands. Five days apart. Together, that and I are five days. We're apart. effectively yeah. the same. Yeah. And you turn in December early. First. But you guys are eighty two. Yeah. 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 So, so I'm, we'll I'm older by ten months. December. I'm to December nine, one. Four and a half. So yeah. like July. Yeah. Right. We, we should rent Ferraris. We should rent If we can go places, we're gonna go to fucking Tuscany and get the fucking villa and get the okay. press cars and we're going to go to the farmer's markets and make food and cook it. Okay. Yeah. I'm into it. Yeah. For the Tuscany. 40th. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Or we're yeah. going to get a yacht Close in Tahiti. Enough. As you do. Both are great answers. Either yeah. are fine. If someone can, if somebody else gets their goddamn captain's license, we can get the 60. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you need to get the, you need two captains for the 60. I can be the only captain up to that, but. But but that sixty was fucking sick. <laughs> if my if my spine works this year, I'll do that. Yeah, that's a bad one to do with a bad spine. You don't want to yeah. you don't want to be climbing around lessons? a fucking Everything's yacht. Everything's moving. You have to pull out. Zach, stuff. Huh? you have been nominated Actually, to drink specialist. You know the the rocking of the boat, Zach, might be good for your like core for your rehab. It could I think be it good. Was all right in Tahiti, but yeah, it could be good. Not in the first few months. No, it could be good. Eventually, destined to hammock life. No shaking. Hammock life is is for real. All right, should we blast through a few of these? We've been fucking driven off track by W.L. Weller. Um, Nick Rogers <laughs> wants to know. This is, this question is like a one-word answer, too. Nick uh, Rogers the lumbar, like a What's superhero. the lumbar pillow that we like? It's just a basic uh, Tempur-Pedic travel pillow. Yeah. It happens to fit very nicely in a bucket seat in between yeah, the Yeah, they lumbar. sell it on Relax the Back, but you can probably find a cheaper one. Have, do you use it in the M3? Yeah. Is it good? Yeah. I only need when to it's use cold, it in though, the uh, Tempur-Pedic. It's like, hard. It's really hard. Wait, who's the racist pillow guy? Who's the... that's the my pillow? That's oh, not okay. Tempur-Pedic. Okay, no Tempur-Pedic. Double check in. But uh, Tempur-Pedic, the inventor of Tempur-Pedic, is right. Michael Fuchs. 
the guy with the crazy fucking cars. You're kidding. The guy who specs yeah. all those ugly Ferraris. The and yellow crazy, Ferraris. Yeah. He invented temp Tempur-Pedic. That's the Tempur-Pedic guy. Fuck me. His Instagram is hilarious. Ugh. It's fucks with Michael. F U X. All you with need to Michael. see is that he has a lot of cars that are the same, but just with yeah. different colors. Yeah. yeah. I, you can't trust anybody that has the same color collection. Bro, like, I mean, listen, anything. listen. Anything. You, you and I, I judge this person from afar. I have judged. Neither you nor I have any idea what it is like to be in the brain of somebody that has literally unlimited money. Unlimited. Unlimited! Yeah. What do you want? Yes! What do you want? Yes! What do you want? <laughs> yes! I mean, I know a couple of these people. It's it's off the fucking but, wall. But you would be a better billionaire, and I would be. No, a, no I don't know. Because look, if you I, like cars, I say you that, get the I say same that. yellow shit. I say that, but when I was in college, I sold drugs. And I had what was, for a college student, unlimited money. Right. I did not make tasteful decisions. But that's not. <laughs> but I don't judge me for that. That's not truly <laughs> unlimited money. It was this pretty is, unlimited but, but by college standards. But yeah. But I, I look, feel like unlimited. Got, you want to have seven roses in seven different why, colors? Though? It's unlimited. Thad, have you ever had one pair, the same pair of shoes in two different colors? Converse. And yes. also, this, to him, this is the I guess same. The, I guess the the the. the I can't believe I'm defending yes, this, but all, I'm going, going to. Just think about this. What if you had all the money in the world? Right. If you, what instead of having all these cars and all these different colors to match your fucking outfits, if you just had if you had three yachts, that's a lot of yachts. It's many it's yachts. More yachts than anybody needs. That's more than all of those cars combined. Mm -hmm. You start going oh, to wow. yachts. You start going to planes. Oh, yachts is a fucking different. You, you know, ballgame. cars are ridiculous. And but but we're talking but it's about less ridiculous than yachts and planes. Less ridiculous. Yeah. Our secretary of education in our country. Huge money. Nine <laughs> yachts. Nine yachts. Yeah. And, and Betsy she, fucking, she owned the Orlando, or Betsy Rich DeVos, DeVos owned the Orlando yeah, Magic. Her, yeah. For you. Like, Nine yachts. That's insane. That's way more ridiculous than someone who invents something as delightful as Tempur-Pedic foam okay. and wants Skittles <laughs> colored will, Rolls I Royces. Will, I will fold <laughs> to Tempur-Pedic. You know what I mean? No. Yeah. Who doesn't love Tempur-Pedic? I'd rather have Who's him. Who's like, fucking Tempur-Pedic is garbage, and the guy who invented it doesn't deserve to buy Fox, whatever he wants. Fox can have a couple yachts. <laughs> he can have anything he wants. Betsy DeVos, no Betsy yachts. Betsy DeVos is a no professional yachts. shitbag. No yachts. The no. Orlando Magic weren't even that good. <laughs> <laughs> three Brick Nick for many years uh, in the three row. Three Brick Nick. Oh, for Nick look, Anderson in the early look, 2000s, you wanna be you want to be snobs? We get to be snobs, okay. because the next question, A, B... Says that if you and Thad were given seven hundred and fifty million dollars a piece to fill a dream garage, what would you buy? I'm gonna go take a twenty minute break because it's gonna take about that long for you guys to answer. No, no, no. Question. I could do it quick. I could do it very quick. Just, just yeah, give all, me a the, all the best cars. That's all you have to say because that covers like all of them. That covers like a sixth of what we're starting with, and then a Gulfstream six and a mm, a Wally. -E Sailing yacht, maybe like eighty something feet, and then just fuel for the jet. <laughs> you only need one jet, but you need a lot of money for. Fuel well, you need a jet big to enough really... to stick a fucking car into. Oh goddamn, you are right. <laughs> do you do you remember? God damn it! Well, I would show you. But I hear I, all. I, the, I hear they're retiring all the three eighties because people aren't flying. Do you think how long do you think until they just fucking got, Habibi they Prince canceled them before turns a three eighty? They they just got two new ones. Oh, did they? Yeah. How long until people start turning 380s into private jets? I think it's happened. Has someone? Has someone I, think, I believe it's Is it happened. like the Prince of Qatar or something has a fucking... Um, uh, the, the Sheikh has his own hangar and his own cargo jet. Sick. Yeah. And you can carry more shit on 777 anyway. I've seen... Um, I'm not sure which royal family's jet it was. It was a 747. Yeah. And I've seen it at LAX. You can yeah, yeah. see it when you drive by an Imperial Highway. It's fucking crazy. But, but here's, a, like, here's the thing with that 750 million fucking dollars. You kind of, you, you, as Matt Farah, kind of like your own thing. You won't go flip to Jet Set or go every place every weekend. You'd be very systematic in your approach. Mm. You're like, all right, going to the Alps. I'm doing my fucking Alps three months you'd pick a thing for the alps it'd be like the stratos with the floor drop right you know what i mean that's yeah. where the 750 would fucking go copy 
Yeah, I'd be in the same fucking place. <laughs> like, I wouldn't buy all of the shit because what's his name? Like, uh, the Collection Twenty Three on Instagram has everything, but he's stuck in Bahrain. Not really. Oh, that stuck. guy, the guy yeah. Spinelli filmed with yeah. back in the day like, in Bahrain. You got everything in the world, right. but all you can do is ba- drive Bahrain circuit. No, that's no it's fun. like that's that's true. That's you need some to bring the cars with you. Bullshit. You need you know to bring I mean? the cars with you globally. That's what's up. So you 100%. need a seven triple seven <laughs> fucking conversion for your cars. Chappie wants to know, automotive death picks 2021. Will anyone go bankrupt? Will models get killed? This is hard. That's, That's actually a hard question because it forces us to consider cars that we never really think about. I think long-term Nissan is in trouble. I think they're in trouble. They don't have anything special. They don't have anything moment. special, but they also have got, they've gone through a bunch of uh, executive troubles in the mm-hmm. last couple of years. Um, <laughs> and then you have this you you know, mean financial problem where they're out as buying a problem? new cars for a little while. I think that's, uh, I don't know. They, they seem like they've been on the struggle bus for a couple a couple of years. It seems like McLaren, I hope, I hope does okay. Cause also, yeah, they, they have to refinance their McLaren loan ain't going every anywhere. three years. Yeah. I don't think they're going anywhere. But man, can they tread water? Yeah. There's a yeah. lot of Middle Eastern money guaranteeing that McLaren and, will not go and, Well, there's enough people that are really interested in the brand there's, also, but yes. Yeah. Then there's Aston Martin, who's kind of Who unfortunately went? not able to build a product that's really competitive at the price point they're building it at. But the brand, it's worth riding it out for special things when that yeah. you know, well, opportunity events and stuff. They also did this. Presents itself. They, you oh know, boy! Yeah, they went public. Uh, That's the opposite um, of Bitcoin. This is very much. The wait, opposite when of is this? When? When? Wait, wait, wait. We're looking uh, at. Oh, there. that's five years. Hold so on. they went public in yeah, August of 2018. Not, that's They're, not good. They immediately jumped from. Is this riding into the bottom? To 317 dollars, which is mm-hmm. insane, and now their stock price is at 1450. Oof! But that's I like gone badly. <clears throat> yeah. Stock price doesn't mean always a good thing. No, well, but, that's think, a, but that's but, a pretty gnarly looking fucking curve. Well, yeah, right. it's, it's it's indic- very the fact that they had to go public and it, you know, and then well, it Ferrari did all that went is not public. Good. What's race? I think Ferrari is race. Is it Ferrari? really? I think so. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Now they fucking <laughs> slang out T-shirts and fucking. Oh, it make is. Money. It is race. How about that? Two twenty-two. What's their look like? What's their Ferrari? What's their looking five like? year. Ferrari is a T-shirt company that also happens to race and build cars. Oh, all right. Ferrari's a doing. Ferrari. Ferrari's doing. I should have bought fifty thousand dollars worth of Ferrari. Yeah, yeah Ferrari is so not they doing. They IPO'd in twenty fifteen at forty eight bucks, and now yeah. they're at two twenty. Yeah, Ferrari so is doing triple okay. Return yeah. that would have been that would have paid for it's a fucking a Ferrari. Yeah, fifty hey. grand. Up, um, yeah, um, man, you know, obviously at, at the ridiculous valuation, Tesla is just not going to fucking go away. It's uh, at that kind of valuation, it seems like someone will always be there to bail them out or fucking give them a loan or buy them out or and whatever. And they do keep making good like they're opening factories in more places, they're building more battery tech like yeah. and now they have the they have unlimited funding for it because they can just sell some shares and Yeah. Like, I think shit. I think all the loose low hangers have been shaken out like the Buicks and whatnot. Dude, like I was driving down gone. the street. I, I drove by a Buick dealership, and they had a little uh, crossover in the window. I was like, I don't know what I that Buick is. Was dead. I don't know what that. Yeah, I it just it looked like a CHR that was not a CHR. Yeah, they have a thing like that, and yeah. I, don't, I don't know what it is either. I'm not really sure what's going on with Buick. Apparently, China supports their. I thought they were dead. I thought they closed no, like four years ago. No, apparently, the Chinese buy Buicks. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I've, know. I've seen Encore. The, the Buick Encore. Encore. Which there you go. It's much smaller in person. It looks than like a BYD. It's not a good looking vehicle. It's just not. I don't just, know. Like, yeah. what's um, going to die? It'll. Oh, this is a uh, following three celebrities, Zach C says Anna Kendrick, Betty White, and Mark Wahlberg. You have to blaze with one, fist fight one, and do adventure drives with one. Well, I'd fist fight Betty White. That would be over quickly. Yeah. Has this person not <laughs> seen Mark Wahlberg? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and all of his, Blaze his with, fight Blaze training with Mark for Wahlberg, him. he could use to chill out. He's a uh, red wine guy. Yeah. I do yeah. adventure drives with, with Betty White. With, uh, that'd be oh, fun. Oh, Betty, Betty White. White. Oh, Anna would Kendrick. Be great. Anna Kendrick. Probably Anna Kendrick. Yeah, she seems like, delightful. She seems delightful. Yeah. Yeah. What, who, what's wrong with Anna Kendrick? Mark Nothing. Wahlberg really loves the Lord. He yeah. built a cathedral yeah, in his house. A beautifully expensive fucking wine. Have you seen his thing? No, his thing, his collection, his wine cellar. Yeah, is it ridiculous? 
I mean, I'm not shocked. He has, it's next his to the watch gym. collection is off the chain. But this is why I'd be a great fucking billionaire. In terms of like mainstream <laughs> celebrity watch collectors, he's probably top four. Holy shit. See, Holy is, fuck. Yeah, that's a GS wine cellar. This Mark is Walter. why if I had $750 million, uh, Matt and I would have drank $30,000 worth of this wine. This is where already. Nino has Easter. Nino yeah. literally goes to Mark Wahlberg's house for Easter, yeah. which is weird, but interesting awesome. and cool. But that is an amazing wine cellar. Yeah. Okay. Go, go, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. Uh, Jack Martin says, you're the head manager of a rally team. What car and driver combo would you want to campaign? Any era in history. Well, if you're the manager... You want Sebastian Loeb driving fucking anything, yeah. don't yeah. you? Yeah. Sebastian Loeb driving a Citroen. Win. Done. Perfect. Fine. You have won. Well, like, <clears throat> I mean, it would be cool to be the manager of a Lancia Stratos championship. You could play, no, you know, you, Colin and Stratos. I would just, I would Google the most winningest, and that would be the most enjoyable, I think. Like, who wants to be on a losing team? Yeah, but I mean, some of the driver. Well, now they have less and less style, but the they good, had more of it. Look at the F one thing, like when Hamilton was out for Bahrain or whatever. George That's Russell, sick, right. like, was on pole. True. So, how much is that? Hamilton's really fucking the next gift from God versus the. He has well, a I really think, good fucking car because, as you know, a really good car goes a long fucking way. A really good car does go. It a goes long a long. Way. I think. Way. I think Hamilton is excellent. He's excellent. A For car will sure only get you so far. But I think he's. I think they're all really fucking close. The excellency is well. There's excellency was, and for a lap in qualifying, and that is. I think that is a little more car than driver. Yeah. The excellence and consistency in racing over a season is driver. Racecraft. Racecraft. Yeah, yeah. for sure. He Hamilton's, fucking knows. Hamilton's the smoothest driver I've ever seen drive a car. He's awesome. Ridiculous. Unbelievable. I and mean, I fucking hate him, but I love it. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, I don't it's hate not, him. I like no, him. Yeah. Like, I like it's Hamilton. It's so tough. Like I'm such a fucking Ferrari nerd to see I'm not see a it. hater at all on Hamilton uh, like, I, like I was on, he's uh, so good. on what's his, uh, Schumacher. He's so good is the problem. That's okay. I'm he's okay good, with but it, I, but but I, you know, but he, I think he's earned it. I wish it was a little bit. You know, it's well, like you I want, want him to be tighter. worse so that the racing's more uh, interesting. Yeah, exactly. But that shouldn't be his problem. I can't that's, help it. That's the uh, BOP <laughs> but, rules, and that's the you know. But that's they need kind to change of the rules a bit. It, a lot of drivers say like they need to take air out of the car so the cars move more. Yeah, I want to see more racing stuff, and he's just consistently better or worse, like. Fucks everybody. Right. So like, shouldn't big your Ferrari dog. drivers get better? We did way more power. <laughs> better tires. <laughs> so all right. I think but, it's it's not like a Ferrari issue. It is a, a little bit. But I like I wish it was a little bit closer across the board. Of but course. I guess closer in F one is still only two seconds. Yeah, closer is yeah, we're, we're just, it's incremental. Yeah, it's so small yeah. in all of this shit. Yeah. Which you know, whatever. Like I've liked watching it without fans. Um, Never Wonder says European road trip, start and end points, price no issue. Where do you have to stop? What car do you drive? I did it in a McLaren from uh, London to Monaco. <laughs> he did it in a McLaren F1. Yeah. He doesn't mean a McLaren. He means a McLaren F1. That's a good one. It was okay. That's a good one. No, I would go. I'd go across. I would go from Portugal across the Mediterranean coast all the way to Croatia, like Portugal to Croatia. And when I got to Italy, I'd go down and then back up. Like literally the entire Mediterranean coast, I wouldn't, North Shore. I wouldn't do it in something like that. I'm doing something attainable, like uh, not that fast. A Vora GT. Yeah. No, yeah, you don't. Something, not a you, don't you, you, you wouldn't do it in something like that. You need no, something like. The Ferrari 550 would be the, would be the car for yeah, that. Something is, like that. That is the fucking car for that. That would be the car for that. 328? Yeah. Something like Something th where the speed isn't everything. No, you gotta like you gotta sit in it for a lot. Yeah, yeah. a long time. Because Rolls Royce, mm, too too often, too, too ostentatious. Too no, but I mean you're gonna hit some nice European mountain roads, and you're gonna want to dice some corners. But like, I guess here's the thing: very anti-American. 
America has a lot of really great fucking roads mm -hmm. right on top of it. You don't need to fucking go there for you could leave wait, 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 LA. Wait, you know, don't 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 sell this person away from Europe. They want to talk about a European road trip. Where do you stop along the way? You go to San Sebastian. Of course. You go to Barcelona. You go to yeah. uh, Nice. Italy. All you of go it. to Switzerland. You go uh, Lucerne. Yeah, you can Lucerne you if you can. I love fucking Lucerne. Swiss Alps. Basically, you drive Amsterdam. the edge of France. Yeah, and then lots Turkey. of places in Italy. Yeah, so Florence, so Tuscany. By Turkey. Yeah, it's on the edge. But Croatia wines. Uh, it's Santorini. Everywhere is kind of nice, actually. <laughs> Just do that for two <laughs> years. The, is the problem like, if you're driving the southern part of Europe? I would. I would. Not, I'm not that down with the northern part for road yeah. trips. The southern part is what's up. Like, the drive from Barcelona to San Sebastian was basically along the Pyrenees at the base. Mm hmm. Awesome. It's like it's like anywhere. Find mountains cruisy, and drive over them. Cruisy, That's fast highway. Find mountains. Nice. Find coasts. Drive over the mountains to the coasts. Yeah. Make sure That's the mountains nice. are open. Make sure and the mountain <laughs> along the way. Because Spinelli <laughs> drove his GT3 RS up to a mountain uh, at the uh, Italian German border, and then he found it was closed, and then he had to go find like a different path. Oh, it added no. like four hours to his trip. Also found that. When was with, that? The drive. drive yeah. yeah. But like, just pick twisty bits and a place to go in the middle. <laughs> Like, mm -hmm. figure six hours a day in the middle. Uh, Jeremy says, is there any reason to consider an Audi TTRS over a Cayman S? Sure. Do you want a rally car instead of a more pure sports car? Rally cars are okay, too. And you if you to modify it, it will destroy a Cayman S in a straight line. A TTRS, can I see your ice cup, Zach? A TTRS yeah. with uh, some very basic mods is good for over 600 horsepower. Uh, a Cayman S is not going to have 600 horsepower with almost anything you could do to it other than change the engine. Right. Impossible. So if you want to go really goddamn fast, a TCRS <laughs> is probably your answer. Or if you want to drive in, like, real snow, you know, if you're in the winter. Was that the They're APR one? Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. it was nuts. And, then, I, and I've seen the other ones, ones too. after that drive even better. You know, the one we f you drove on uh, driving NBC, which yeah. is like kind of an RS3 coupe. Handles great, dude. The RS3 I drove on sorted had was very, very streetable and made 900 horsepower. RS3, and was very, which is the same as a TTRS, no difference. It's a great car, and it made 900 um, horsepower, ran nines. <laughs> and this fucking thing was a daily, this was a daily, like. If you were That's Hayabusa, it was awesome. Awesome. shit. It was the shit. Where's the one from sorted? Keep going. Keep going. Keep. Oh, oh never, there it is. Stop. Er, 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 er. Never made it to the web. It was by Ratified Motorsport, and it was, it was a. Uh, How I mean, is it? Was awesome. Why is Ratified like APR and Ratified are probably the same Ratif kind of shit? No, Ratified is this dude who started a company during the fucking pandemic out of his house, tuning Audis. His name is Ratan, <laughs> but Ratified is just a cool name. Yeah, this car is fast as fuck, and it was. Uh, it was loud, but he fixed it and made it quieter, and it got much better, and it didn't lose any power. Nine hundred horsepower and a fucking so fast. small four. You could do that, in a, you, but you could do that in a TCRS. Ooh. So you Ooh. could have a, that was like not bad. A, you could basically have a Group B rally car, you know, with a TTRS, yeah. and that's not something you could do with a Cayman. Well, that's, or, that's way gnarlier than a Group B rally car. Diz says Earth Roamers. That is all. Yeah. yeah, they're a thing. They're a thing. They're a thing. And we recommend they drive bus. on the dirt. The bus. That, what's that thing called? I have no idea. Thad found some Russian or... I got fed... I was Googling something. I got fed some giant 37-passenger overlander kind of bus thing. To, I don't know. I sent it to you. It was cool. It was a fucking like 30-person yeah. uh, overland bus. Uh, yeah. I've seen that as well. But we were I can't just, remember the name of it. Tarsus sale. or some shit like Tar that. I don't know. It was for Targus, sale on Tarsus. Like Alibaba or something. It was, yeah. You could buy it on the internet, I remember. I found a posting for it. Yeah, it was but, weird. But I think the we're talking about the- It had like a 13 liter diesel in, in engine and insane. some crazy shit. It's insane. Yeah. Like, just want to go off road a little bit. Uh, Luis says, Thad, did you ever buy a car off of Dubizzle uh, for your stay in Dubai? Yeah, I bought a Pajero, Mitsubishi Pajero. Which is basically like a Montero, but yeah. there. Like yeah. the regular one, not a crazy Yeah, it's got one. like locking diffs and things that, that drive. What year is it? <laughs> you don't, do you not even know? 
2012? 2013? Something like that. What does a 2013 Pajero look like? I, I don't think even that's know. What it is. I don't. Know. I honestly don't know. It's there's uh, no U.S. That is that it? Yeah, that's it. Oh Jesus! It's like the last gen Montero in the yeah, U.S. Yeah. They just kept making over there. Yeah. Oh boy, it, it's awesome. Is it? Yeah, I got like, it drives fucking great. It looks like it has room for you. Yeah, it does. It's Any nice. boat is a great what boat engine to someone is who is I just silver. Stuck in the it's ocean. A, I think a 3.8 liter V6. Okay. So, it scoots. Do you go? Have you gone off-roading? I have not gone properly off-roading. I've done dirt, uh, power line trails, and yeah. kind of driven in. Oh, this is not. A, when you go back to back with Weller, this shit is not good. <laughs> that shit, Johnny's got me. Like that it's shit's very good. Different. Like it, it, you know what? The Toyota Supra was good too. When I went on the press launch, and then we went to Performance Car of the Year, and I went back to back with the Evora GT. Not good. Same thing. Very same thing with your different. JTS Brown it's a, it's a, going it's, head to head with the Weller different. here. When you go straight from Weller to JTS Brown, you really taste that price difference. <laughs> <laughs> you really do. Well, here uh, talking about availability of things, I was trying to get the the barrel of Blantons. <laughs> there was thirty five hundred people ahead of me trying to buy a fifteen thousand dollar barrel Dude, of bourbon. You couldn't have predicted the pandemic. Com- uh, at home online shopping, the inability to go to bars, the rating of liquor stores for all the best mm. booze. So many people were or trying to order barrels from Buffalo Trace. It like crashed the entire. <laughs> Dude, at, at the the cheapest price, the cheapest price. We'll do. Uh, I was in queue number thirty five hundred. I logged on thirty minutes before. If everyone on that list was willing to pay $5,000 for a barrel of bourbon or booze in any capacity, that's a lot of fucking money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but people like people that don't have money right now yeah. really don't have money. Uh, yeah, right now. I can tell, yeah. And the people that have some money right now can't spend it on anything. And the idea of being able to have this bourbon at your fucking vacation house yeah. or they don't have that much to sell and so <laughs> it seems silly but if you literally can't get Blanton's yeah and you can't go to a bar that's got Blanton's in your local liquor store and you're f- you can't find it on the internet but like Blanton's is going we'll sell you a bottle for five grand you go well I'm not that rich but like I've got five grand or whatever, you know, I got buddies. I've yeah. got a few friends. We could each throw You're, in a couple grand for this. Everybody grab a straw. Yeah, you know what a, I mean? They a, put they got a lot of deposits they've been doing on cyber it, trucks. They've been doing it for a <laughs> long time. Yeah, yeah. But like, phew, fucking the cyber truck scam is a whole other one. Yeah, no, let's move on. And also, Luis says, would you, would you ever get into collecting shoes like watches? I'm not about the shoe collecting. I don't know. I, I understand why people do it. I get it. But to me... It's not like, like you can, you, like you can wear a watch and you can drive a car and it doesn't ruin the value of something like wearing a, wearing a pair of right. shoes. Yeah. Like, if you wear the shoes, that's the end. Like you, there, that's it, right? <laughs> well, my uh, my sister's husband, his buddy, is into like the the Jordan Nike thing. Right. Also, very wealthy. He started some rich tutoring thing, but he, he's been buying a lot of this stuff. For the flip, I don't get it. Like, well, it's like anything else; it's an asset yeah. class, yeah. and so uh, people start investing in it, and then other people go, "Whoa, well, this well, is this an asset class. Let's invest in it." I, I get it, but like the shoes, that's different. Well, and with cars, if you're going to buy a museum piece, it's going to stay a museum piece, and it's going you're going to sell it a museum piece, right? And if you know that if you start driving it, you're now turning it into a driver, it's a different thing, right? I yeah. buy drivers, and then I can sell it drivers. as a driver with just. The number is just a little yeah. higher, but the condition is same or better. If I buy a pair of shoes, there is a 0% chance that I could sell that pair of shoes in same or better condition. No. Zero. It's like it's the, not possible. the McLaren road trip we did from London to the south of France, like that will not affect the value. Zero. Numbers on an odometer, you can, <clears throat> you can work around. Well, for example, Nike Air Max. If I wear Nike Air Max tonight, walk around... They are not worth twenty five thousand dollars anymore. Yeah, so I, Doesn't I don't fucking work unless you just want to have a closet full of brand new in box shoes and like that's your thing. Which like, all right, 
collect shit. Like, but to me, like, what, what I about do? collecting rare chapstick? You know, I mean, like, bro, I got magic cards from back in the day. You want them? Dude, like, let's go. Like, <laughs> I like it some Nike off white as much as the next man. Give me some of those. You know what I do? Crazy. This is gonna sound insane. It's gonna sound so crazy. <laughs> when the new Jordans come out, yeah, go to the store. I buy them. Yeah. And then I wear them to the gym. <laughs> they're my gym shoes. So like on your they're, feet or you carry them? I carry them to the gym right. and then I wear them on my hands. There you go. They don't touch okay. the ground. My, <laughs> my, my gym shoes are, are you ready? They're very good gym shoes. Chuck Taylors. That's stupid. Your feet are gonna be fucked and your knees are gonna be fucked. You should get real shoes. You they're good for squats. The, you can't wear Chuck Taylors to the gym. Yeah. Seriously? Well, I can't wear them to walk to the gym because the ground's How too fucking hot. How do your knees hot. function? That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I think There's he's literally, you have orthotics in Dude, there? He's Dude, no. he's been wearing Chuck Taylors and nothing else. This motherfucker is wearing 09. Chuck Taylors at the gym yeah, at 38 squats. years yeah, old. Dude, he used yeah. to wear them on set. You walk oh like six miles a day. Oh my God. I have my old man shoes on now for like walking around. My kingdom for your knees. No, I can't squats. walk in my house barefoot. <laughs> I don't like walking in your house barefoot. For the my fact floors that. are very hard <laughs> in my house. But, but still. Hold on. <laughs> You gotta no, wait. We were talking about this the other night, but it might have been the wine. You said that there's different squishiness of floor, like it's marble. Yeah, it's relative. Put to the thing. Yeah, no. So right now I have marble floors, right? Which are very. This hard. is very, very, baseball. very hard. But no, it's not. In my new house, which yeah. I talked about, yeah, we're getting this ceramic tile for the kitchen floor. It looks like a slate. But it's this not. Is a, this it's is a ceramic thing, tile. I find this yeah, very hard to it's believe. It's incremental. It looks like stone. It is stone-ish. But it's not as hard as a natural slate or marble. It has. It's not like squishy, yeah. like that playground <laughs> rubber shit. But like it's just different. It's incremental. Oh, baby. Like the EE clarity is the same as the D clarity. I swear, baby. It yes. looks exactly the same. Yeah, you won't except notice over time. <laughs> Look, my mom has worse knees than me, and she's done like 19 kitchens in the last 20 years. Oh, Viv? And, this Vi is Viv, and Viv is about okay. this tile. It's a, she's about it. I'm going to go with Viv on the knees. Yeah, you have to go with a Viv. I'm, you know how excited I am to eliminate stairs from my life? I'm so fucking... I Zach, cannot wait. I've the been eight here months between for some time. Fuck stairs. Thad, Thad has gone from an apartment with an elevator up in the sky, yeah. which the next question is about, about actually. Yeah. But now he's back where in his old room. He's in his, his old room in my house. And after like two it's days- It's not Hannah's office. After two it's days, weird he's to like, wake up to that. oh my God, the fucking <laughs> stairs, dude. This is ridiculous. And I'm like, I'm telling you, the stairs are- I probably run 50 flights of stairs a day. It's good for you, though. Unless you have bad knees, then it's- Unless you have right. bad knees and a bad spine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's I mean, fucking, I could do it right You mean now. the L45 <laughs> surgery twice? You but know, that makes perfect sense. He's going to have fucking end up getting it. I know. It. You're going to have to get it. Thad, for a, real though, Miguel wants pressing. to know, Dubai has really tall buildings. Are those elevators super sketch? I could not imagine going to the 140th floor. Uh, I'm poor. I've lived on the 5th and now the 12th. <laughs> If I can't run down it, I can't live in it. <laughs> what what floor do you have to live on to be rich? Where do the rich people live? Um, well, they well, live in houses pretty if, really. If I hated money, I would live in the Burj Khalifa this year. You would? Yeah. Just for the experience it's of like, living it's in it? It's cheaper than I pay to rent at your fucking house. Well, that sounds what? like I was ripping you off. <laughs> no, but it's like... I pay you had the cheapest ocean view I know. room in all of yeah. Venice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have, have it even cheaper. How much does it cost to live in the Burj? Uh, well, now that I have to fucking qualify. But it's like two grand a month, three grand a month. Oh, that's not to live in that building? Yeah. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, to like yeah. a ni nice apartment? Yeah. yeah, it's not that bad. Wow. How interesting. It's I didn't realize that. Yeah, it ruins the joke of cheaper than. <laughs> right? No, but it's, it's actually, if I didn't like. Well, I guess this year, this year is fucking different. But, like, I like traveling. I like spending money yeah. on stuff like that. I like buying wine. Like, I could easily live in the Burj Khalifa and have, like, a crazy fucking view. That could oh, be cool. It's not bad. Like, it, the, if you're living in Los Angeles or anywhere major, like, totally could live in the Burj Khalifa. But I also like extra cash in my pocket. No, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's not like, like a wise investment. No, no, but it's like no. a thing you could do no, if like, you want to I think to my, my ending plan will be to do that once I guess you kind of have to yeah right have you been up to the top though for a thing well you can't actually go to the top oh you can't you can go to the bar which has shitty service oh. <laughs> and like not the greatest fucking view on the planet yeah. but like 
you know, you don't want to live in a tall fucking you building. You don't live in a tall building. You know, I like, went to visit Vinny in Florida, and yeah. he's on the 35th floor of this building, oh. right? And he's got a nice view, and he's got a beautiful apartment, and it's reasonably priced, yeah. right? The building is very nice. To get into his fucking place, I, I, I'd kill myself. He, he has to park on the sixth floor. So he has to drive like a mall to the sixth fucking floor. Not Every okay. time he comes That's home. That's some Dubai shit, bro. And then he goes into the elevator, and there is a 55-floor building, and there's like six or eight apartments on each floor, right? There's four elevators. Normally, no big deal. COVID, maximum two people. So now you got to wait for an elevator to get to the 30-whatever fucking floor. No. Dude, it took like 20 minutes to get out of the building. It was it, I, it was the definition of my nightmare. Dude, Imagine living on like the seventieth floor or something like that, or that Porsche tower mm -hmm. where you have to call the elevator to get your car into it to get down. That's oh a, my god! That's a problem with the Burj Khalifa. You have I've heard I haven't done the the, the the tour yet, but you have to take like three elevators. Like mm -hmm. one, you also get valet and free like delivery of your shit to your apartment. Like I bought groceries. You live in a hotel, it. basically. Yeah, you live in yeah. a hotel. Yeah. But you have to go elevator to elevator to elevator. Like, fuck that. Yeah, changing noise. elevators. Like, some Vegas <clears throat> hotels have that, where it's like, take this up, then walk half a mile, then take another one up. I take the limit of taking a piss to, like, the max of, like, I can make it still. I don't want to have to play that game at the Burj Khalifa. Oh, like, if you're, like yeah, you're uh, right. I yeah. need to take a leak. Like, let's Jump see how long we run, can run, take run. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's not, that's not the place to do it. Um, Thanks, Miguel. Nick says, now that the automakers have realized the budget doesn't need to be spent, are press junkets over? It's a good question, but I think mm. the answer is actually no, because the secret is the people who work for the car companies actually really like going, love on. going on vacation. <laughs> yeah, the journalists like going on press junkets. Some of them do. Um, others don't so much, but but they like doing it. But the 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 uh, the people who work for the car companies get to stay in those resorts and shit for like two weeks straight. And I don't know if everyone who does that, but like, I suspect that it's not just the journalists that's like going to those places. I don't think it's going anywhere because it's it's nice for the story. Like Matt Farah yeah. drove the new blah 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 and the blah blah it, blah. Yeah, I it guess. helps the story a lot. You know, we Mercedes brought you to this you know super fancy place and it puts you in the mood and this is what the owners are going to experience instead of like, you know, if you drop a really nice car off at my place, it's like, well, I'm not really having the Mercedes ex Rolls Royce. Yeah, experience. it adds to the. It helps the, the story and the fantasy and a little bit of that. To How many articles have we read that start with, like, you're blasting along the roads of Turin? There I, I am there in my fourth-story apartment in my There's other bedroom. people that probably care about it more than me. The residents of Florida. I would arcade. personally rather have it dropped off at my house. Well, you also have your own little, like, racetrack proving grounds. Well, I would hope that anyone who does this job has their own version of that wherever they live. You well, know, but uh, I'm not. That's not unique to me. But I mean, like having been here, the the variety. But I just of, only have so much time in the day. Yeah, I don't want. If I can make a video without having to spend a whole day traveling to the place and a whole day traveling France. back, yeah, yeah, yeah. just to spend one day in the place, I don't. I don't give a shit. There's no really. benefit. And when I make videos on unfamiliar roads on a press launch, I can't always, you know, do the thing that I'm. Yeah. Trying to think about doing because I don't I don't know what's around the corner. <laughs> Where's the goat? But I look. I think uh, to answer the question, I think no. I think press launches will resume eventually. In fact, they already have. They're I was not going in, I was invited to a press launch that I did not uh, attend because it was a traditional press launch, which I don't really need to go to right now. And the car that it was for was the Hellcat Durango, which a couple of weeks later was available here. So, but I, and I went to, I've been to a couple events that were regional. So instead of having a big fly in one, they'll rent a couple tracks around the country and they'll, people will show up one at a time and that's okay. Cause really what you want is like, proper people to drive it in the proper setting. I want to drive yeah. the car and I want it in a proper setting if possible. If it's not my roads that I know and like and can drive it on my own time, then a racetrack would be nice. But, but the thing that, is with you know. here, having been in a place where everything's billiard smooth, all of, you hit all of the settings. Yeah. Rough, smooth, this, mountain, canyon, uh, hot. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like, this is the best place to drive cars. Tavarish in the house. Oh, fucking Freddy. Freddy. What up, sir? Stop buying cars. It's not good for you. Oh, uh, <laughs> it says, what's the supercar that best mixes old school analog driver experience and modern speed and power? Uh, stick shift. Anything. Gallardo or stick Mid-90s, shift. Mid-90s, early 2000s. Stick shift 430. Stick shift, stick shift 360. 430 is good. Stick shift 430. Would be it, I yeah. That would be the magic. Any of those, any of those 2005 to 2010 stick I, shift cars, the cusp, yeah, 997 mm-hmm. GT3, and you're gonna pay for them. They're yeah, gonna be expensive, of course. They're gonna be expensive. That's modern enough where it works, old yeah. enough where it's analog. Yeah, Not Jeremy a 48 <laughs> loved Zach's uh, uh, Ferrari view. He's doing a good job at Haggerty. Nice. Connor, Daly's a Delica L400. Can you send me the link? That's the newer Delica than I have, the, the 90s one. Uh, and I spent 4000 last year on maintenance. Yikes! Should I swap for a Ford E350 with a camper conversion and a Civic Daily? What is the last line in there? Brother, husband? I'm P.S. confused. Can't Zach. wait to be your brother, he husband. He made a joke in chat. He said, uh, Zach, you're very funny. Do you want to come and bring some humor to my house? My wife needs it. And I said, send pics to my Instagram. Oh. And then I said, oh, I think the whiskey just hit. <laughs> is this a swinging problem? Um, I, I don't think it's you a know, problem, Fad. I don't like Ford E350s. <laughs> I think you should find the money for a sprinter of some kind. I don't know. What about a transit? Swap for a 350 plus a Civic? I mean, I don't, well, uh, hold on a the second. E3, so, yeah, go ahead. Ski bumming, winter, is that his only fucking thing? That's, I guess. Oh, whoops. What, well, the fucking. How a often? Daily, like, dailies a van? I mean, you want a daily and E350 don't want daily, and then live in your van? conversion? No, but if you can That's get a I'm Civic confused. daily and then have an E350 camper, because oh, those, yeah, right, those right, will right, run right, for right, a long Civic time. Did, right. Parts are everywhere. People have been doing it for a long, long time. Wait, yeah. oh yeah, I guess I guess it does sound rational. You're only camping, you're only skiing in the van, and you're only dailying the Civic. Yeah, that does sound more. Yeah, yeah. do that. I support that yes. decision. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you have a purposeful thing and then like a regular thing. Yeah. Four thousand on maintenance for a Delica. Yikes. That seems a lot. And something got broken. I mean, oh. granted we spent like eight hundred for the major service on ours, but that's once every forty five thousand kilometers. Maybe it's off road in or something maybe. like that. Yeah. I feel like you've also broken the market for the R thirty two. What? Did the R32 Skyline? You got yours at a wicked fucking price. Uh, Yeah, you'll never see that price no, again. It's not, they're they're yeah. mid-30s. Yeah, no. I sold it I sold it then for today's price, which is nice. Fucking. Yeah, they're good. Larry Chen's um, a sick. fucking guy. Larry Chen's color is awesome. So lucky. And Lee Keen is building one that is insane. Lee's building it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, Keen Project Skyline? No, not no. Keen. No, just no, his personal awesome project. No, but it like... All right. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's going to be fast. Okay. Yeah. They're nice. Uh, Miles says, with the Land Rover uh, Defender, would it better be better spent buying a TRD Pro Runner and a vacation with the $30,000 $30, savings? If I mean, do you want like an 11-year-old truck? Like, Do you need a savings account? Wait, like, yeah, this no, is, like, he wants to, to buy this. a house? Yeah. No, like is no. this, this person oh, vac- saying instead vacation. of spending $72,000. Yeah. Should I save thirty thousand dollars? I don't think a TRD Pro Forerunner is forty two thousand dollars, is it? I think it's in the high fifties. But, but, hold on. He's saying, should I save the money and get a TRD Pro Forerunner instead of a Defender? No, because it's a not nearly as good off road. I don't think it's even though it's pretty good off road. This one says the MSRP is fifty grand. Okay, so it's it was twenty two thousand dollars or cheaper. a vacation. But like, a Forerunner isn't like nice. Special. Like, do people think Forerunners are like nice? They They're are not that nice. Very capable, durable cars, but they, they have capable and durable weird. are not no, it's intersecting not nice. Venn diagrams with nice. No, it does not feel luxurious. No, I didn't feels, find the driving no. position to be very yeah. comfortable. A V six, no, it still has extra. the old six speed automatic, yeah. which yeah. sucks. Yeah, look, I like. I, there's nothing wrong with a Forerunner. If you if you said, Matt, I'd like a capable off road SUV that will last me 20 years with just oil change, that'd be like Forerunner. Yeah. But like I would do what he's suggesting because of who I am. But who who are like Miles? We don't know enough about you to tell yeah. you. Do, would you Bomb rather vacation. have a Land Rover or like Tim's Tim's Forerunner? You can't still also finance new, your vacation in into a car payment. Just saying. 
No, yeah, yeah. Also, are you spending Do you cash know, like, on financing things? Well, here's the thing. We are not you can go to Namibia. You get $1,000 on your flight there. You can get a car for a 14-day self-drive safari for another $2,000. And that then, like, like that's good. way right. cheaper than you have all the fucking adventure and the explore. Bro, like, that's a finance question. We don't fucking yeah. know that, dude. You gotta be able to have $4,000 <laughs> like, on a credit to card. To some people, $30,000 is everything. To Send some people, your... $30,000 is nothing. Uh, well, uh, that, yeah. Re- good point. To some, uh, to, if you're leasing the car for 30, if you're gonna lease the TRD Pro 4Runner versus leasing a month. The, the Land Rover, the difference is not thirty thousand yeah. dollars. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Like, it's just not. It's like if you think that a defender is a waste of money because of the places that something cheaper can go. Well, okay. Yeah. But you're not getting the refinement and the style and the build quality. And I, by build quality, I mean like luxury, <laughs> not like yeah, yeah. the electronics are fucking it may. Up. Yeah. Toyotas are simple. <clears throat> they simple, work. Simple, simple, yeah. simple. And they'll work for a long time. Yeah, that's what you're buying. Because they're simple. Land Rovers are advanced. We have terrain they work selective when they're new, you know? things and air suspension. Yeah. Uh, more Rob, uh, Robbie Moore. More Robbie says, I'm getting into handmade kitchen knives. Any favorite brands? I do have one. Yeah? What do you got? My uh, my friend Ed, who just made my kitchen knife. What is, oh, it's just your friend? Yeah, my buddy Ed. Yeah. Did he sell yeah, knives? Yeah, yeah, he sells knives. He like makes them. Let me oh, fucking find it. We need it. more information. I you. buy yeah. I buy knives from uh, New West Knife Works out of Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and I have an entire set of their knives that I really like. They are very cool, and mm-hmm. uh, they're easy to keep sharp. And it's a it's made in uh, made in America. Yeah, my my buddy Ed uh, made my knife. I said Indiana Jones Holy Grail is what I would like it to weather as. So it's like a bare carbon steel that gets all the fucking, the junk yeah. and tarnishing on it. Yeah, like yeah. a nice marble walnut handle. Fucking cool. awesome. Uh, Zach, what else we got here? These are the last three from today. Oh, the great. rest are... All right, are we're, we're over, so we gotta do it. Uh, Kiefer says, uh, I'm in Phoenix for the weekend. I wanna drive uh, some, presumably some canyon road. Uh, should I rent on Turo? A 2015 BMW 235i manual or an 09 Z4 manual or an 08 Boxster with an auto? No. Or a... What? Tall? What's auto... That? One tall... I don't know. I don't know what that Oh, he's means. six foot one. Oh, he's six foot one. Oh, oh, I didn't understand what that means. Okay. That's not, I'd that's probably not your go fault. with the, just the BMW manual. That'll do you. Yeah. That'll be Okay. Boxster Auto 08, that's a no, because that's no. pre-PDK. We don't want that. Z4 Manual 09, may, you may run up into that height issue oh, there. Of these tall manual I would go with the 2015 BMW 235i manual. Yeah, that, that should do you. Here, here. Uh, Maverick Monk says, I convinced him that a $20,000 Cayman is not a sane daily, but the BRZ has lost its sparkle. What comes next? Don't love a Miata. Not a fan of the muscle car vibe. Ooh. Supercharger what, for the BRZ. What is the next thing if you're tired of a BRZ but don't quite have Porsche money and you don't want an American Power. muscle car? There's a problem in that there is a lack of choices Power, friend. here. You could go with a GTI. Back over here. Uh, Volkswagen GTI. You could use them too. You could probably. Not what a what was the too. budget? $20,000? No. I, oh, for $20, that a BRZ is like eight thousand bucks. That's you want to yeah. be in a BMW one thirty five, maybe. Yeah, that's a really good platform. Put some yeah. suspension on it, actually, and they're great. Yeah, and at least the engine is in a place that's like accessible. You don't have to take the fucking like a Cayman. The problem with the Cayman is not that it's unreliable because in general it's fairly reliable. But if a lot of shit breaks, you got to take the whole goddamn engine out, which you don't want to do. So. Well, like, the thing with the BRZ, though, is, like, it's really nice. It just doesn't have enough oomph. Yeah. But for, like, did you ever drive the Crawford Turbo 400 horsepower? 400 yes, foreign? it broke twice. Okay. But the supercharged <laughs> ones. The supercharged okay. ones the supercharger, were good. The Rotrex like, ones was good. It was nice. Yeah. It, like, it filled the problem of the BRZ. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, but it's a lot of money. You're talking about putting like six, seven thousand dollars into a BRZ. Someone Is commented. Someone yes. asked us about that, and someone's no. like, "It's actually more like twelve when you have all the supporting." Twelve. Yeah. Nope. Fuck so, that. It's a hard no. Get a stock Cayman. Fuck hard that noise. Hard no. Really? Twelve grand to fucking sort this all the problems. I, people should do their own research. This is what the internet says. So you know, the kits are are X, but then to make yeah, it reliable, maybe more. I don't know, sense. but um, you know, it's a lot of money. They're rad though. You should you should try to get into the muscle car vibe. Get a used SS one LE from like a, a lot generation of, like, ago. There's a lot of old people dying to, to flip them soon. Yeah, but I mean get like a get like a twenty fifteen Camaro SS one yeah. LE. You know, that's, no, a, and, and that's a good car. Fifth gen F body. How much are E no E ninety two M threes are still too expensive. Yeah, way too That's like thirty. I don't know. All right, last question. And I just like sighed reading it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking exhausting this question for a hundred thousand dollars. We need a free, we need a, I need a freight of frequently asked question where I can just we're gonna direct, make a video to direct be about everybody this. to this. Do you should do it by five thousand dollar price break? And here's the problem we get a lot, we get a lot of this because this person who's asking the question does not know what type of experience they want to have. And whenever you're going into a car purchase and psychedelics, you should need, you should like, what's weird to me, it's weird to me that people don't know what type of experience they want to have. Yeah. They will ask me about cars that will very obviously feel completely different. And they'll ask me about one versus the other. And I go, well, if you determine what experience you want to have, this question is answered. But I, and I, I, I feel bad because I feel like they might just be reaching out because they want to say anything. But, but I feel like our palette is greater than what most people's palettes are. But I feel like in the it's videos I do a good job of describing what these are. I know, cars like you're trying like to, to drive to democratize the palette. So the and the but, so the question is this: like this dude is probably here's never the reason I saw sat it. in any of them. Here's the. Well, I, He's got $100,000 and can't figure out how to fi sit in one of these cars? Dude, there's a lot They're of people. They're all Porsches. There's he a lot of people that have a lot of money that have no fuck what to do. I guess. Well, here's, the, que here's the question. For 100K, 997.2 GT3. <laughs> 997.2 Turbo. 991 Carrera T. Wait for Cayman GTS 4 liter. So Definitely. you've got Thank rear engine, rear wheel drive. Naturally aspirated. Rear engine, all wheel drive, turbocharger. Rear engine, rear wheel drive, turbocharge. Mid engine, naturally aspirated. They're, at least they're all kind of priced in the same. They are, but they're completely different experiences. Oh, yeah. and, they're, and they're different experiences in an incredibly predictable way. I don't. You don't have to drive any of those cars no. to determine how different they would be, right? So you first determine, do you want to drive mid engine or rear engine? Do you want to then drive naturally aspirated or turbo? You could put those four cars in a box, and by answering those two questions, you would answer. You would land on one. This, so Thaddeus, let's play is, a game. This is let's the play a game. Let's play a game. Fucking do you want love to drive mid-engine or rear-engine? This is the Roger deduction. Would you like to drive mid-engine? I or would rear like engine? to drive rear-engine. Great. Man. Eliminate that. Would you like to drive? Eliminate the turbo and the Cayman GTS four liter. Would you like to drive naturally aspirated or turbocharged power band? High revs, low torque, or fat mid range? I like to feel like I'm a racing driver. High revs, low torque. Boom. GT three. You made your box. You answered two questions. You land on one. Boom. It's weird to me that somebody wouldn't figure that out, dude. They don't like. They don't have the fucking the background or things that they've they've never that's said. True. That requires but, no background. No, but for no, I think it does. No, I it went, doesn't. Dude, I went into the fucking dealership and I said, I really like. Granted, it's over there. I went and said, I really like this car. I would like to understand what this car is about. Can I drive it? And he goes, You can book a test drive in three days. I'm like, I just want to like go around the block. I will know in five minutes if this is nice or not. Like the. Like a lot of these people just never fucking make it in there to have personal experience. They're like, there's a scared thing. But I just a feel like the, I just feel like the differences between that product are very oh, they're right, huge, right they're huge. on the surface and huge, character defining. But even we're, we're fucked up people. We like, are? 
Yeah, because we've driven everything. Everything. There's not a thing that you couldn't put right, into a So this person, like, they look at the photos thing. of those cars, and they go, I like that one, I like that one, I like that one. I'm interested in all of them. They think hit. it's cool. What, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But if they, haven't, if they haven't felt the difference of mid-engine, rear engine all these things, they don't know, they don't go, okay, what flavor of hot sauce do I want? How spicy do I want it? They've never had spicy hot sauce before. You know, they live in Finland. Yeah. That's kind of what it's like. We like So they're coming into this going, the, 99, the turbos are awesome. The Caymans are, I hear talked about a lot. The guy's coming in with a crossover. We don't know what he's had before right. this. So he doesn't know I guess. The, all those differences. We like weird I shit. Guess. Like, just, give me that Delica love. No, like, I just, I just, what it is though. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's because I also make reviews of this product, and I would hope that somebody they would should have watched them. Watch them. They should have understand. So like, but as they we know, have, like, as getting, we know, Matt, getting into I don't the know. Fucking, know. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. Getting I, into the mix, like you should have. I have a to be honest. The first are eighteen of twenty questions were great. <laughs> there were some great ones in the first half of that stack. So but I think we like, can end on that. One hundred percent broken. Huh? Hundred percent, we're broken. For sure, in, in automotive land and life, we're informed and jaded at the same like, time. What it, like, what's going to make you excited for twenty twenty one of automotive landscape? The it's Alpina not A110. speed. It's not like what? What are we looking for that to be next and super and special? Actually, and fabulous? you bring up a fucking great point. I'm going to drive a car on Monday that I can't talk about yet, but I'm actually kind of scared for. So that. I'm excited for that. Well, sorry, you can't. I can't talk about it. <laughs> well, okay, but your point, Chris. Like, you know, every week Harris is on a video and he's talking about how the hypercar thing needs to stop. We need to go back to yeah, like lighter fucked. cars with less power that are more fun to drive. Yeah. Maybe though, the thing is that the people like us who have driven lots of things and get to continually drive lots of things, we are no longer excited by 700, 800, 900 horsepower. We are going okay there's more nuance to these things we've we've seen that side of the mountain it's actually not that great we should come back over here to 350 horsepower 2800 pounds but the rest most of the people in the automotive enthusiast landscape don't have enough experiences to go that's true they just go no it's got more power it's got to be better wow which is the problem i don't know maybe i just the feel like the same shit over and over though maybe that's the difference well, you, i mean you answer it's very similar questions very frequently but i think we can't assume that one listener is going to see all the videos. I mean, we know that we have a million subscribers, but a view gets, you know, a video yeah. gets like 100, 200,000 views. So, yeah, I guess. I feel like I, I feel like I say the same thing a lot. Just so well, it's it, it happens to be the fact of the matter of like the car technology doesn't change very often over many years. Like for us to be super excited about something has to be so kinky and weird, like a Morgan three wheeler to go, oh. This is well, really that's weird. certainly true. Which is yeah, like yeah. for your for look at your normal like. I mean, but, by the way, I just did like twenty minutes of fucking jubilee. This show on a Land Rover Defender on a well, fucking SUV, like you know. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, very excited for the Mach E, the 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 electric kind of really Ford cool. I'm driving this week. I'm super excited for that. But it's, it's, it's not like, that jaded. I know, but it's like comparison to the normal. Like take out the. 1994 Ferrari, like the normal range of things this week would have been really awesome things. Yeah. And like an old school analog thing that you like have to actually muscle in turns. The shittiness of it of like, fuck, I got to like really like turn this shit to get out of the parking spot and like it doesn't warm up till later. Like that's really endearing of like the fucked up personality of uh, – of like anything, like the chick that's like damaged in a certain way, like, but she's lovable. Like, well, you, that type of, ex, you know, you used to you have to sacrifice for that, and now you can't get- You're paying for it. Well, yeah, and now you, you, you can't get that anymore. It doesn't exist, so you, it's buy a different, the, you buy an old car. That's why I think that's like this, this old shit is gonna be special. I just, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, oh, guess I guess at the end of this week, I'm just tired of saying the same fucking thing over and over. <laughs> so I, we, we get, I will say, we get way more questions about 9-11s than we get about anything other, anything else. Of course. Yeah. And, they all and, and, line, they're all, and they're all between 98 and 2000. And the questions are all extremely similar, yeah. and they're all extremely superficial and obvious answers. It's not the, – the questions don't typically involve a lot of nuance. They, they go, should I get this one or this one? And the answers between the two are always 
really obvious by looking at the yeah. either a photo of the car or the specs, or secondarily to that, by watching a review, and I have driven every goddamn modern Porsche. But is is this hunt for nuance a thing that people... It's not nuanced. The question was, well, I just told you, you could draw a box and yeah. answer two questions and end up in the right but car. Like, is our hunt for nuance like... I have no hunt for nuance. I have cars yeah. that are all completely fucking different and weird. Yeah. I have like, a hunt for fucking weird. I don't have a hunt for nuance. Like the little the little subtle, subtle details. Will we find the, the 88, the 89, the 90? Like our vertical wine tasting. Like I would I, I would love to say that the, the GT3 thing you did. You could it would be like a yearly 2006, 2007, 2008 GT3. Awesome. Yeah, most like, companies don't let you or awesome. want you doing that. They don't like, want you. Could doing you imagine that. like the wine tasting? It's like, very fortunate that Porsche let you do that. Most companies don't want you doing. Yeah, that. Yeah, it's the, the the vertical, which I think is super special. Like imagine yeah. the. And by the way, those videos didn't do that great. I really? thought those videos would smash, and they didn't do that great. Why not? Don't know. They didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they just didn't. They're all old cars. Mm, they're old cars. It's track videos traditionally don't do very as well as yeah. road car road reviews for us. And uh, you know, it's just, the the visuals are slightly different because the, the the pass bys were like, this is the Porsche B roll. It was it was a little bit different in terms of visual assets. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. I made five of them in three and a half hours, so it wasn't like a fucking fail or anything. No. But and it's not like it's not drive. like there's some enormous yeah. demand for that that you're that you're talking about. Is it noticeable between the prepackaged B-roll and your B-roll? Is there a noticeable dip between? Oh, yeah. Really? Fucking mm -hmm. shot like with real cameras and stuff. What I mean, like yeah. in the, the viewing thing, like they dip oh, out? Oh, no. I mean, no, I don't no, think I noticed, so. I noticed no, the I don't, quality like I can fucking no, tell. I don't think but, there is, no. No, it is. Not really. I don't think it purpose. matters. No, the metal drives the views. The yeah, metal drives the views. It's all the, the interest in the vehicle drives the views. And so, I Who's shopping for a 4.0? Nobody. Nobody. I, 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 nobody. And so I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't necessarily think that every single video would have done ridiculous numbers, but, but they, I would say they underperformed for sure. I think they all you would think You would think the, 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 the best of the, the, you would think that would fucking work. Well, that's indicative that like the car is very, very special because that's like one of the best cars they've ever made. Probably one of the best cars ever made. But yeah, it's not a 2020 sure. X. You know, it's not a new thing that pulls in people that are 14 to 23. You know, when 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 I was 17 and just reading car magazines like stacks on stacks, if you if you gave me two magazines and one is like here's a story about a car from the 80s that we really really loved, and it's like here's one from right now that's the new Lamborghini da da da. Like I'm gonna read that one just because I'm excited about the new thing that's coming out when I'm young. Yeah, current references, things, and pop culture. That's why I think they have to continue to do the proper tourist drives or the journalist drives. You have to go places to have yeah, things. I think like yeah. it's, it's a stand-up comedy problem when they only start writing about plane flights and things like that and hotels. Ooh, like, kind of lose the you lose the, 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 uh, the thing, the the personality, the viewpoint the, on life. Yeah, because all you're talking about is your travel and your the very narrow part of your life. Yeah, like right. It doesn't. You got to be like broad. In a, in a certain way to appeal for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll bring them back. We'll see. Probably. We'll see. They have to. There's no way not to. Like, not everybody lives in a beautiful place to drive cars. <clears throat> well, they've also been doing press launches for, like, what, 30, yeah. 50 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah They yeah. could have gotten rid of them a long time ago, but they didn't. You know, They could have been like, <laughs> what if we just give them the car? No, they do it because people at the company like to do it. They lied to me for a long time and told me that this was the only way financially to do it. But they do it. That's not true because now they do it the way that I said they should do it, which they is just it. to leave a car at my house for a couple of days. And they're like, oh, my God, we're saving so much money this way. Yeah, uh, of course you are. Oh, Thank of you. course. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> it's a, like a business class to, you know, to, to yeah. bet. It's an easy writing trope um, to go, oh, bu 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 bu. wide. <laughs> <laughs> Put yourself in the frame, Dick. You're there. If you're going to leave, if you're going to fucking, if you're going to just leave it there. Leave it there. Oh, I forget you can fucking see over there. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have a monitor for the monitor output of the show. Things. Yeah. And this is where we're going to end this show because we're fucking going on. Well, what else would we do? I mean, eat dinner. This is eat dinner. The back in the day, <laughs> chat at the table, fucking Darla. 
Yeah, we're <laughs> going to continue this for dinner. Yeah. Yeah. That's lovely. But like, you know, for dinner with <laughs> non cancelable topics of just, you know, for dinner. <laughs> That's sad. You just made it sound like as soon as the camera stopped rolling, we're like, now we can talk. Yeah. Fucking yeah, these parlor, we, these parlor really boys had something. Put on your owl helmet, Thank boys. God. Follow me on parlor. <laughs> <laughs> I like my kingdom. Meet me in the woods north of San Francisco for the Bohemian Men's Club. Right. Of oh, the Bohemian Grove? Uh, mm-hmm. Roger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, we got through a lot of that. Oh, well, Jesus fucking we? Christ. Got through a lot of that weller. Yeah. We did. That was a good show. It was. You Welcome, right there? We, could, we could do more. We will miss That's you, fine. Thaddeus. We could do more if you fucking move back. Yeah, we could. We could do could. more if you came back here where the roads are twisty and, and broken. I, I think you miss it. I need, I need, my exit plan needs to be a 348 and then no savings. <laughs> for, and for 2020 I was and, able to buy Zach's freedom and, and so maybe for 2021 I can buy yours <laughs> Matt's, and, and, uh, and Matt's new house I, I really like the layout I'm really I happy showed about Thaddeus the his bedroom. I showed him his bedroom in the new house I think it's he great wants it. I think you know the beach shit's a little passe, like uh, <laughs> a little more to like a suburban mid-century lifestyle. Some smooth jazz. <laughs> Not about that mid-century modern life. Oh, it's beautiful. It's very I can't nice. fucking wait. It's a shame that you can't show people your house because they're fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not no, going to do that. that. We're not going to do that. I couldn't. It was hard. You couldn't not. You can't not show the beach. Like like. That is something I'm surprised by is when people like automotive influencers buy a house and then they're like, here's my house tour. Like, I, like I get you're excited on. about it and maybe it just makes it a write off, but your like your address might be on there. I don't know. I would not, I wouldn't do that. I feel bad for people like Amelia, like she's a chick and like she yeah, posts well, she a shop. Has a, that, she has a whole like, strategy. But like people could find out like where her shop is and like show up and like do shit. Yeah. She's, she's no one like, I show up to the fucking window. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people can show up here and yeah. do sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, different. Fortunately, you know. But it's not your All house. those ex-Navy SEALs home. detailing cars. Fortunately, <laughs> right. yeah. Our exactly. arsenal of, you know. <laughs> Everyone that works here is a former Navy SEAL. <laughs> Actually, I'll tell you what. It's like about 10 to 1 people send interesting stuff here that I enjoy to some weirdo shows up who I don't really want here. You should. I think you should encourage the random shipments to this place. Encur- I mean, people have sent me books. Yeah. People have sent me books. You're a someone fast, sent me you're fruit. A fast fucking the reader. exotic fruits. The weird fruits that someone oh, sent. Those fruits. Someone sent the exotic sweet. fruits. <laughs> anyway. We need, to, we need to right. end this show. We need to go outside. Yeah, we're going to go outside now. Thanks, everybody. That's been a fun show. Shout out to Tradecraft Farms. Thanks for hooking it up today. It looks to be about $350 worth of show. Huh? <laughs> it's about yeah, $350, $350 worth, $350 worth of uh, worth Weller that on that show. That's okay. That's all right. Thanks for the super chat. That covers that. Um, we good. We good. That's a good show. If Freddie's will, still uh, listening. I love Freddie. Zach, what do we have... What do we have the beginning? I bumped. I had to bump Johnny because I have to do the thing I couldn't talk about on Monday. Mm-hmm. But we've got Adam Ferrara. Fuck yeah, Adam Ferrara oh, no is is, is going to be around. I believe it's Tuesday or Wednesday. Amazing, hilarious. And then we we did we got Johnny coming the week after that. But there's somebody. You should get second. John Sally back in here. What a great guy. I we, we could probably get him on the uh, on the line. It's fucking COVID. We're not trying to. Have, we can't have yeah. people come through. Yeah, it's yeah, weird. House. But LA like, is, the John LA Sally component. LA is leading the country. In LA is fucked numbers. up right now. Whoops. Whoops. What? We don't have COVID I'm here. <laughs> yeah, know. but we haven't seen anybody. We're no. the only three people we've seen. <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> haven't left this room for we years. We haven't gone anywhere. No, yeah. that's that, that was. We'll talk about it later. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for everybody. Good night. I wish. I wish you a good weekend. Bye.